Computerized Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon. And by your tips and memberships on coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just $1. And as always, thank you for all your support, including sharing, chatting, liking, and subscribing. Now roll that famous logo animation! Good evening and welcome back to Computerized Start Live. I'm your host, Justin D. Morgan, and I would like to point out that a Justin is never early or late. He arrives precisely when he intends to. <laughs> All right, who do we have in the chat? We have Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shack, who was first. Karina's Techno Babble, that was taking bets on how late I would be. Francois. Retro Tech Chris. Jeremy then. Betting it'd be five to ten minutes late, and I believe I clicked the start stream button at about 8.01 or 8.02. Although I guess you could say I, I technically started streaming at 8.05, which is precisely when I intended to. We also have DJ Craze, Brian of Everything is Broken Garage, and my mic is low. Interesting. Oh, my mic is low? Yes, my mic is low. Okay, let me let me check on that. I think I see the reason. Let's see if I can adjust it without doing weird things. How's that? Is that any better? Oh, let me oh, oh, oh. I know what the problem is. How about that? Although that might actually be a bit on the loud side. No, actually looking at the view meter, that is precisely where it should be. Yes, I forgot that I had to switch mics at the end of my eight hour, eight plus hour streamathon on Monday. And forgot to change it back. So yes, my spare microphone, which is right here, was pointed the complete wrong way for me to talk to you, which is why I was low, yes. Yep, that was the wrong mic. 2,000% better, says Richard Tech Chris. Yes, also, I have done a little bit of rearranging to my bench, so I'm sure I won't be able to find anything for two weeks. But I now have my multi-sync monitor mounted to my right, which I have my oscilloscope up on it. So now if I'm probing things, I can see the oscilloscope, but I also have the new VGA switch connected to it. So if I actually power up the Mac, it will actually, if I have a video signal, switch to the Mac input, which is really cool. I still have my same crummy monitor to the left. I am going to try to keep the chat window visible because Last stream, we had a little incident in the chat, and I do apologize about that. But I am trying to take steps to make sure that doesn't happen again. And while I will not disclose what it is, or who it is, but I have a secret person out there that has a secret code they, they can send me, and I will eventually see it, and I will know that something happened in the chat that I need to go take a look at. So how is that for a start to making sure we don't have a little uh, bar fight in the chat? All right. Also, it is Marchintosh, as you saw on my animation, which means I am going to try to find things to work on that have to do with Macintoshes. 
Yes. That could be as simple as my LC here, which we will get to in a moment. Could perhaps be what was in the uh, priority mail flat rate envelope. Uh, could have something to do with the uh, SEs that are sitting back there, or maybe even the LC3 that's just nonchalantly hanging out there. And for the eagle died among you, which I would give you bonus points if you figured out what it was before I tell you, could be that LC3 right there that's even more nonchalantly hanging out in the background. And I could have another Mac that, well, if you go look on some of my past videos, you'd probably figure out which LC it is. But yes, I might have LCs for uh, each week of Marchintosh. So now I know you all are wondering what was in the envelope and where did it come from? All right, I will tell you, it didn't come from any of you all. It is something I bought off eBay, the place where everything I ultimately regret buying comes from, it seems like. And I did uh, auto schedule a Twitter post because I don't think I, I don't know how you schedule Mastodon posts, but I scheduled a Twitter post with a clue for, but Trina, Trina got really close. But let me, let's go see what the Twitter guesses were first. So I, I'm actually going to Twitter now so I can actually look and see what all the replies were. And let's see here. Actually, I need to go. All right. So it looks like. Adam McGee first guessed it was a very squashed cheeseburger. Although Tom Barber might have replied at the exact same time, guessing, guessing it was a squashed turkey club. And then, of course, Tom Barber, in his brilliant wit, replied it was something with Adams, and I thought he was going to win with a guess, something with Adams. But luckily, Trina came in and guessed a computer part that should not be put in this envelope. So Trina, you win the, the uh, my applause for getting the closest. Because yes, it was a computer part that should have not been put in an envelope. Ah yes, I wish I could show your uh, message on screen, Garth. So yes, please. I will uh, plug my coffee goal. I set a new goal for the month of March. I would like to point out that the dollar amount I put, it'd be great if I hit it, but sometimes I just go for creative numbers. And so all of you math nerds out there will probably note that it's related to another day of the month. Oh, and it actually is kind of showing up in the uh, YouTube view correctly. So yes, please. It will help with Marchintosh and other things. So, yes, now, of course. Ah, uh, uh, yes, Jeremy says I need 28 more subs. Now, there were not 28 more subs in here. I, I prefer to organically grow them because the unorganic ones that you buy off eBay quickly evaporate every time that YouTube does a bot purge. So. Uh, let's see here. I'm, yeah, let's see. I'm looking. Oh, it looks like I did miss a couple of people. Yes, Garth. Hi, I, I missed saying hello to you, I think. And, um, uh, one bit fever dreams. Welcome. Uh, Francois. Um, no, it's not the nuke codes in the envelope. Although I just about went nuclear, went nuclear when I figured out what had to be in the envelope. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> Ryan, everything is broken garage. Trident video cards. No, I have given up buying Trident video cards. Adrian Black was right. They're terrible. I don't think I'll buy another one, but yet there's still a couple on my eBay wish list. But as I've said, eBay is the place where I buy things that I eventually regret. Uh, Francois guessing a pivot card. No, I would like a pivot card, but it would have to come with the pivot monitor. Uh, let's see, Joe of Joe's Computer Museum. Uh, uh, Francois is guessing a CPU with pins. No, 
Well, I mean, there are, there, I guess we're technically pins in the envelope, but let's see here. Yep, Jeremy figured out my coffee goal had something to do with the number pi because pi day is March 14th at uh, 3.14 a.m., I guess. So, yeah, that'll be convenient to celebrate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see here. Ah, yes, thank you, Joe. Um, and also, I guess one last announcement before I switch my camera views and you all are disgusted at the same time as to what someone had the audacity to put in a priority mail flat rate envelope. There is currently a GoFundMe by Kansas Fest. They are a nonprofit organization. They are raising money to save Tony Diaz's huge Apple II collection. So please go check out the link in the chat. I will also go, actually, if you will hold on just one moment, because that is worthy enough, Joe. I am actually, for the benefit of anyone watching this later, we'll go ahead and put that link in the video description. Because I might forget to uh, add it to the chat, uh, the uh, comments later. So let me... Um, So I am going to, let's see here. All right, there we go. I have updated the description. That way, at least the link will be there if I forget to go put a comment. I may, uh, I may change it to a pinned comment after the stream if I remember, but at least the link will be there if you're watching the replay and want to help out with that GoFundMe. So. Please, please do help with that. And with that, I'm going to switch to my table view and I'm kind of hoping I can maybe save the item that was in the flat rate envelope. So it, you're quite welcome, Joe. That is a worthy announcement. And the moment of truth, that is the item that was in the flat rate envelope. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, I believe they're going to use pods to move Tony Diaz's collection, so, um, which are way better than the flat rate envelope, because seriously, uh, this is how it was packaged. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so it was in the envelope. It had a little bit of bubble wrap. I mean, like, I think it was two layers, which is not enough. And there was a piece of tape it was taped right here and around the bottom. And I don't know why the tape was there. Um, I don't see anything loose, but yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do a, a YouTube short on this, how, how to and how not to pack an LC logic board. And Francois is asking the important question, and it survived? Well, Francois, We're about to find out. Because I uh, haven't had a chance to test it yet. So you are going to find out live if this logic board is one lucky logic board or if Justin will be filing yet another significantly not as described case on the basis of that it arrived very, very much damaged because the seller took no, no attempt at all to properly package it. Although I think there is a separate case for it arrived damaged, but, um, oh, and I guess if anyone's wondering, because they, uh, they knew I had a package that FedEx was supposed to deliver Monday that needed a signature. Oh, and I have a timer. Let's see here. What was my timer for? Oh, I got a message from an eBay seller. Ah, because I uh, bought something that I probably didn't actually need today. And they're going to ship it soon. Yay. I like it when sellers ship things soon. All right. So I will take care of that in a moment. 
anyways, the computer that FedEx was supposed to deliver Monday went out for delivery Tuesday, and it really did require it. Requ and the reason why I couldn't uh, have Walgreens hold it, you might, if you remember my Monday stream, and I was complaining that I kept getting the error message, "Try again later." Well, actually, the reason I couldn't have it held at Walgreens is because the package had a restriction on it that it couldn't be redirected. So I actually had to call FedEx to try to figure out what was wrong. And I did mention to them to please let their app team know that the message, please try again later, is not the appropriate error message when the customer will never be able to try again later. And they claim they would pass it to the app team. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I told them, you know, you'd have saved me a phone call if it had just told me that shipper put a restriction, can't redirect, then I, at least I wouldn't have retried like a dozen times. Whatever. They want to waste their customer services time. Well, I, I guess. Fine. Tell the customer to try again later. And when they keep trying and it never works, well, you're going to get a call from them to ask why. Why does this never work? So yes, um, I don't know who decided to ship it like that. Um, I, I would give out which eBay seller it was, but let's wait till the end of the story because it is quite possible that, um, I don't know if they even have any more computer equipment for sale, but yeah. Um, I uh, oh hey Bruce, welcome. Uh yeah, uh, Jeremy, you're right. Uh oh okay. Yes, uh, Joe says it's an LC. It's not going to work anyway. So yeah, um, you're right, Joe. It is probably not going to work until I recap it. But let let's see. But if I notice really bad things happening like sparks and fire, then that might indicate there's a crack in the board I didn't see. Um, Bruce, I'm actually not putting an FPU socket in this one. I am going to use this board for something very special that um, I don't need the FPU socket in it. It has to do with a mystery upgrade board that I keep saying is a mystery upgrade board because I've yet to see that any announcements have been made on the mystery upgrade board. So until I see a public announcement about it, it is going to have to remain a mystery upgrade board. Um, yeah, um, but yes, Bruce, I actually, my other LC2, I did put an FPU socket in it. Uh, the worst part about it is removing solder from 68 vias, some of which have the audio capacitors leak onto them and make the uh, solder oxides that are harder to remove. But yeah, once you do that, 68 pin socket, easily available, easy path to an FPU. So let's see here. Um, let's see. Actually, I might, uh, Garth, I might actually be able to uh, do a video on that. I might have the footage that I can use to do that. Anyways, all right. So LC2 logic board, it's got RAM on it. I put a VRAM SIM in because it requires VRAM. The suspense is killing everyone. Three, two, one. Uh, just kidding there. Uh, you all probably thought I tripped the circuit breaker, but. <laughs> oh, does anyone hear this wonderful noise? It is making fun whiny noises out the speaker. <laughs> Stream crashed, yeah. <laughs>
April. <laughs> well, um, our uh, um, the vice president of education in my Toastmasters club was kept referring to yesterday as March Fool's Day. So, uh, belated March Fools. Hey, it, yeah, caps. Yeah, that, that I'm hearing the songs of the caps. They're going, help us, help us, please recap us. We're dead. Okay, well, let's see if this actually will boot. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also demonstrating that I, I do indeed have my oscilloscope on for uh, what we'll work on next. But let's see if this will actually boot into an operating system, and then we'll get on to the, the main event. So uh, it does look like, though, this eBay seller might have gotten very, 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 very lucky. Uh, or maybe in this case, this eBay buyer got very, very, very lucky. I'm uh, trying to mic the uh, song of the dead caps. Welcome to Cap City, Population Justin. That's, <laughs> that's a good one, Ryan. Uh, in fact, that almost could be an interesting uh, sticker idea or maybe, uh, maybe a t-shirt or something. Oh, Joe, I, uh, uh, yeah, I wonder if I can create a stream. Uh, Joe's wondering if he can create a Stream Deck shortcut that takes a screenshot, then also puts an animated GIF on the stream of the buffering YouTube thing. <laughs> uh, actually, Joe, I believe you can. Uh, GameDoc04 on Twitch has something, well, he's got something similar, and I don't know why I picked the chooser. Uh, probably because it's called Chooser and I was trying to choose something. But um, he's got a button on his Stream Deck, or I think he uses a Stream Deck. He pushes it. It does take a screenshot and then puts that on a, uh, a blue screen of death picture. Um, it's uh, quite hilarious. In fact, actually... You know, that is quite scary sounding. <laughs> um, and suddenly the voice of 17 capacitors screamed and then were silenced. <clears throat> and then were silenced. And were silenced. Thank you. Or I think there's 17 capacitors on this board. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 7, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you hear them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to shut this down before uh, a kettle does go off. But yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, yes. All right, that is the Macintosh LC2 logic board that I bought on eBay from a seller who got really, really lucky that the post office didn't royally smash that with something. And uh, I paid. Um, what did I pay for it? $25 plus $11 shipping. Well, I think the flat rate envelope does cost $11 to ship retail, which means they probably paid like eight, uh, somewhere between eight and $9 with the eBay discount, but eBay did charge them fees on that envelope. Uh, now I, I am going back and looking to see um, 
how they said they were going to ship it to see if I overlooked something. Let's see, they said... Oh, they said they were going to ship it USPS Parcel Select Ground. So yeah, there were no clues that they were going to just shove it in a flat right envelope. They, um... They, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I, I bet the post office... I, you know, I kind of wonder if what they did is uh, they took a box to the post office and the post office said, oh, it's going to be like $13 to ship this box. And they're like, what? Flat rate envelopes, only like 11 bucks. Here, hold my beer. Or hold my Starbucks that they paid $7 for. And uh, yeah, that's probably more, uh, hold my Starbucks. Uh, would be uh, probably what they had going to the post office. And uh, uh, they were like, well, I, uh, I, I think it'll survive in this flimsy flat rate envelope of, of appropriateness because they just wanted the money. So anyways, let me see. I, I did see some uh, <laughs> uh, questions in the chat and some comments that are pretty good. So anyways, um, but one last look at this LC2 board, because I can't do anything to it, other than I guess I might throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner so that the capacitor juice doesn't continue to degrade the board, because I did order a capacitor kit from Console 5 for it today, but unfortunately they are back ordered, so I don't know when they'll actually ship it. But yeah, that egret chip, is quite crusty and so is the sound chip. So I'm actually probably going to throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it now, now because that'll just annoy me with it buzzing. But I'll, I'll throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I don't know. I'll throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, hopefully before Dave's stream. You all have my permission to ask me on Dave's stream did I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner yet? And if I haven't, then you can bug me until I do it. So, uh, let's see here. Yes, uh, Mac Macintosh Fool's Day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I didn't think about doing that until the last minute. So my, my little gag of I tripped the circuit breaker. So it, it was a bit rushed maybe, but well. Yeah, I, I bet I could work. I bet I could work on something. Of course, now you'll be expecting it, but there's always the people who've never been in the stream before. But yeah, Ryan, welcome to Cap City Population Justin. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Cap City, early 90s rap. Cap City looks like Raccoon City, but instead of zombies, it has bad caps. Umbrella is trying to clean up their mess. <laughs> yeah, uh, Garth, those poor caps. Uh, yeah, Francois, a uh, board needs to be decapitated and then recapitated. Hey, K Mac Vintage. Uh, Jeremy, this LC2 board is actually just that it's an LC2 board. It is. Actually, probably going to go in my actual LC2 due to the mystery upgrade board that I don't know if I can talk about yet. <laughs> and then that logic board will go into my LC if I can't figure out why my LC keeps doing bad things when I do totally normal things like put working PDS cards in it or bump the video cable slightly or things like that. So, um, I, and I might have a spare LC board hanging around because one of these days I'm going to buy an LC of some type and it's going to 
be a mystery machine and I'm going to open it up and it's going to be pure sadness. Like, right here. So, <laughs> um, I, I think, uh, I think Joe probably at least knows what I'm talking about because I think at one point he was looking for a, a, a sound chip because of pure sadness that happened in this general direction. So, yep. Yeah, th thanks, Garth, for plugging my coffee. Uh, yeah, smash that like button. So, yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave appropriate feedback for shipping a logic board in a flat rate envelope. I will make sure that that is uh, in the feedback that was uh, a close call. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, ground like coffee and not like land shipping, yeah. Yeah, lucky, lucky, lucky. Uh, yeah, I should buy a lotto ticket. Ah, Francois says Glyphicons, half, half, halflings, has an Apple logo in the font. Oh, and Joe says that he cleaned the board three more times, then left it for three weeks, and the dead sound chip randomly started working. And then he shipped the board back to Javier. <laughs> How appropriate. All right. So this logic board is the LC logic board that Garth sent me because I was looking for a way to a way to possibly fix my LC because, and now I'm trying to, oh, my LC board I put in a safe spot. Uh, so my LC logic board is the first logic board I ever tried to recap that was SMD board. And I made several mistakes doing the recap, including ripping a pad here. Uh, ripping a pad here. Although I think that one uh, m m um, didn't actually, oh, I think I just kind of lifted it, but didn't rip it. I ripped a pad here, and I kind of butchered this area of the board, although mainly um, I think it was really just the uh, non-used pads because I, I tried to do something stupid. Uh, by the way, you cannot put four more memory chips on an LC and have it work, it will not. Even though it looks like, oh, well, that looks like the LC2 that has eight memory chips. No, there's something else on this board that the machine does not recognize the other four. I don't remember if it just didn't recognize them or if it actually didn't like running because it was a violation of what it was expecting there. But yeah, I, I kind of... Anyways, my original LC board is kind of been butchered so i was i posted on social media hey i'm looking for a spare lc if you if you see one it's a good price let me know and garth replied back well i've got a spare lc board i can just send you i was like sure because I, I didn't need the whole lc i just really wanted another logic board but there was a catch with this one because garth probably knew i wanted a challenge and this one is proving to be somewhat of a challenge in that Garth recapped this board. And I don't know if it was doing it before he recapped it, but after he recapped it, it would only power on sometimes. So sometimes it, it wouldn't power up and sometimes it would, would. And if it powered up, it'd work fine until you shut it down. So anyways, I have yet to get it to power up. So... <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm not sure what, someone's looking for the code for something. One bit fever dream. Zulu, Nabu, Tango, Kappa, Kappa, Epsilon. Was that the code? E -N I don't know. Um, anyways, um, so. 
This board is kind of where I left off on my Monday stream. I mentioned that, well, I'll uh, probably start March and Tosh by taking a closer look at this board. So that's where we are. So anyways, well, I guess, I, I guess what I can do to make it easier on myself and also so I can actually hear hear it chime or not because at the moment I don't know what I might need to do to it and I'm also having trouble getting the power supply out and I don't have a I don't think I've got a power supply that's working that's easily accessible and unclipped so I'm just going to put this back in the case and so this power supply is my LC power supply that I recapped I think it's the first LC power supply recapped, but as far as I know, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I've, I've, I, every time I have trouble with a board, I put it in this with this power supply. I check voltages. Voltages on it are fine, so I, I don't think the problem I'm seeing is being caused by bad voltages. I also until I can uh, figure out what's wrong. I'm not plugging in the floppy drive or the SCSI drive, but I do have the speaker connected. Yeah, uh, and Garth says, thus Marchintosh starts with my past failures becoming Justin D. Morgan's successes. Yeah, it could be that. Although Garth, you know, it might stump me too. So, all right, this is going to be somewhat fun though. Uh, unless, let me, let me see if I can, whoops, whoops, hold on, I'm dropping things on the floor that probably should not be dropped. Even though this is Marchintosh, I probably didn't really want to drop my PS2 mouse, because I might need it someday. After all, April Fool's Day is next month, and, uh, I probably will be a fool in April to do PC related stuff because I'll have enough of it stacked up. So, yeah. Although, there is also that one more thing that we do in March and Tosh on April 1st because that is Apple's incorporation date. Which is probably fine. I don't think April 1st is on a Thursday. Yeah. Just <laughs> Garth's like, have you tried checking the voltages? Uh, yes, Ryan, I have tried checking the voltages. Um, in fact, just to prove it, I am going to, um, if I can remember the uh, name of the program that I need to start. Um, oh, there it is. Then, oh, there we go. Yes, I have the technology. Thanks to my not popular multi multimeter brand sold by popular YouTubers everywhere. Because they don't have a multimeter that can plug into a computer so you can show the values on screen. I have, I have an old school multimeter. It is plugged into a serial cable. Serial cables plugged into a USB to serial adapter. And I've got a program that is reading the serial port data. So now I can power this up. And, oh, and then remember that I do have to do something before this works. It is. Wait a minute. Hold on, I gotta remember what the uh, magic thing is. That the...
Oh, that's not it. It is second. Oh. There we go. My multimeter is old and it doesn't like to remember certain settings. Such as the, although it may do it on purpose. Anyways, so this is the LC power supply on the negative five volt. I have negative 5.145 volts. That is within tolerance on 12 volts. I have 11.8 volts, which is within tolerance. And on five volts, I have 4.94 volts, which is within tolerance. Hey, Dave, welcome. Say ways. We are within tolerance. So I also just realized that if I plug the monitor in, oh, I think that's what the switch will do. Nope. Oh, well, okay, I'll figure something out. I just realized the uh, mistake of my setup. I may have to rearrange things at some point, but not right now. All right, so I have the, oh, hey, Jack68K, let's see here. All right. So I am going to pull up the schematics. And luckily on Tinker Different, Hi, Robinson has posted the schematics and now I see what we should have here. So beside the SCSI port, there is a burn-in connector, or I believe that is it. Even though the burn-in connector has 15 pins show, oh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 13, 14, 15. Okay, that is the 15 pin connector. So, uh, let's see, the first couple are not going to help us. However, pin 19 should be 12 volts. So pin uh, 12 volts is making it to this part of the board. 14 is connected to SBSY, which I don't, I don't know what that is. I'll have to find that signal on the sheet. Probably not of any importance. So negative five volts is here. All right, negative five volts is making it to this part of the board. Let's see here. This one's not connected. And then. These two are ground, and then these two are five volts. So five volts, and it's probably redundant checking them both because I think they're connect. Yeah, I, I see the trace running between them. Okay, so we have five volts, negative five volts, and 12 volts is making it to this part of the board. Because sometimes the first best troubleshooting step is to make sure you have the expected voltages. All right, I don't think I'm going to try to probe the processor just yet. Because it has like 20 bazillion pins, although my multimeter probe is probably sharp enough. Well, okay, maybe I will check a five volt pin on it. 
actually pin 10 is CPU clock. Well, okay, let me see if I see a CPU clock on the processor. Well, I'm presuming the ADB port is, the metal of the ADP port is grounded. Also, I, uh, I have a, found a slight limitation in my setup. So I need to figure out how to, actually, I need to find a connector that I can plug into my new fancy VGA splitter that will let me manually switch which uh, VGA is, takes precedence. So that might be a stream I, I do sometime. I just got to order a couple switches and cable, and I got to figure out how many pins. It's like a three and a half millimeter phono jack or something. Probably three conductor. Okay, so we've got pin 17, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Wow. Okay, I'm having trouble seeing these pins. Also, I think my uh, microscope is too tall for this. Yeah, my microscope's too tall for this board with the, uh, with it in the case, okay. I'm just double checking what's around pin 10. Pin 10 is clock. But I just want to make sure if I don't get the right pin. So 7, 8, and 13 are plus 5 volts. 14 is a signal. Okay, probably nothing that will cause. Too bad a problem. All right. I could use some magnification, but I can't swing my microscope. Well. Oh, wait. Maybe I can. Here we go. All right, let me see if I can get this into place without. Nope, still not. Okay. Well, we'll just go to the uh, pluggable one because I, I can't not see the uh, processor pins clearly enough. All right. Ooh, that looks uh, lovely. Okay, so here's the corner of the processor. So that is pin. Seventeen. Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. And
Well, that's interesting. I think I found the problem. Garth, did you cut a trace around the oscillator? So 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. This should be pin 10. Oh, never mind. I must have somehow missed the pin. And we have a, okay, there is a 16. Ah. Garth cast fog on it before sending it to me. Okay, so I have a 16 megahertz clock going into the processor and with the video cable plugged into the LC, I can't show you the oscilloscope. But I think I just thought of a way around this maybe. Let me, uh, let me check something here real quick. All right, I think I have one of these other monitors. Also has a VGA input. And I will just usurp it momentarily for this so that I can until I can make a little input select device for my VGA switcher. So now I believe you probably can see the Should be able to see the oscilloscope screen. And I'm going to plug this VGA cable into this other monitor. So if I get to the point where I think there might be video, I think this monitor will at least let me see it. But at the moment, since we're not getting a chime, I'm not too worried about it. I just have to figure out why in the world the cable won't plug in. There we go. All right, there we go. VJ cables plugged into the monitor. Oh, you would be able to see the oscilloscope if I did that. Okay, I don't have the, the multimeter on that view. I also don't have the microscope visible in that view. Anyways, so let's see, that's actually, there we go. There's the clock signal. Hey, Sean, welcome. Yeah, so we got a good clock signal here. Oh, see you later, Garth. I'll let you know when I figure it out. So, okay, we got a good clock signal going into the CPU. Hi, Frank, welcome. All right, because without a good clock signal, then there'd be no hope for it running. Now, the other signal I would like to look at, if I can find it on the schematic, and by the way, if any of you all who are familiar with the LC schematics, uh, find a signal before I do, then feel free to put it in the chat, and if I see it, I'll see it. But I was looking for the, uh, as I'm pretty sure there's going to be a reset signal going to the CPU. And I do not, oh, there it is. It is, ah, pin nine is reset. So that is this one. And it's marked, interestingly enough, it's marked as, huh, 
Well, the schematic shows it as uh, active high, but I'm pretty sure there should be a line above the reset signal. I'm pretty sure reset is usually active low. All right, so I turned it off. And it's kind of weird that it's floating like that. Maybe the capacitors have enough. You sent them maybe my oscilloscope slightly out of calibration. I also may not be using the best probe for what I'm doing. But it's at least giving me a signal. So... Okay, so it does look like reset is going to 5 volts. Now, can I find halt? Ooh, halt is pin 123. So, let's see, that's going to be... I'm reading the silk screen. Oh, actually, the reason why the signal looked bad, it could just be my ground, where I've got the ground clipped. I may not have the best ground point on my oscilloscope probe. So, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123. So, that is the halt. Um, halt is low. Alt is low. Okay, I'm going to have to probably pull up the 68030 data sheet. Oh, no, excuse me, 68020 data sheet. Because I usually thought signals like that were active low. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to want to know if halt is active high or active low. Because that is low, and if halt is active low, then something is asserting halt. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Oh, it looks like uh, Big Bad Biologist is here. Welcome, John. I'm working on one of the LC family computers. All right, well, I guess let me see if I can find. I think that's bus error. And that's at 5 volts. Which actually would be ex what I expect for bus error, because that's... Okay, now, now I think I need the data sheet for the processor. Um, yeah, let me see what probe I am using, because I have two, theoretically have two probes, and I am using the FET probe for my oscilloscope, which is, I believe, an active probe, and that's probably also why the output looks strange. Um, I do not know where my other probe has gone to. Which is why I'm using the FET probe. If I find the other probe, which is like a standard 1x passive probe, then I'll probably start using it because it doesn't do some of the weird things the FET probe does. Um, and mind you, it's a FET probe, not a Boba FET probe. Har, 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 har. All right, so I need the 68020 data sheet because I need to know if halt is active high or active low. And the schematic I'm looking at does not have any symbols on any of the signals. And I know there are active low signals on this processor. 
all processors have them. They usually have a bar drawn above the name of the signal. And this schematic has none of those. And I, I cannot, I can't believe that the 68020 doesn't have active low signals. So let me, let me check. Of course, the thing is, what is this going to tell us? Um, either I'm going to find out that the system is in reset and has a bus error, or I'm going to find out that the system's halted. I'm thinking I'm going to figure out the system is halted because that's the signal that's low. And I think reset, halt, and bus error are all active low. They typically are on any um, platform. Okay, well, I just found the description for Motorola, what those three do. And actually, uh, there are three other signals I may need to check. But what this doesn't say is if they're active high or active low. I, I, I can't see the chat, so someone's probably screaming. Um, carbon, Ryan, carbonite is made of, from the goo of leaking capacitors. Well, that would explain uh, um, Han Solo's look when he got frozen in carbonite, because no one wants to be smelling fish for a long time. Oh, here we go. I just found the diagram in Motorola's data sheet. Here we go. Ah, uh, yes. All right. Here we go. So, according to the data sheet, reset, halt, and bus error are active low. So are the other signals that I'm willing to take a look at, potentially, uh, bus request, bus grant, and bus grant acknowledge. Those are all active low. But first, though, I need to see why halt is low. So the reason why this board is not booting is because halt is being asserted. And I guarantee you that forgetting to put the VRAM SIM in could be one reason why halt is being asserted, potentially. Although, quite honestly, I thought that would just probably yield in a sad Mac. But, uh, well, death chimes, because it wouldn't be able to draw a screen. Um, okay, let me see. Let me, I'm looking at the schematic, so bear with me. Um, well, I guess I could uh, maybe... Uh, let me see if I can uh, bring you all in for the journey of the okay let me let me change my screen here to something innocuous in case when i did some monitor rearranging ah uh, there we go mm, okay i still did uh All right, hold on. Mm. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, OBS. That is exactly, exactly what I wanted you to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Hold on, hold please, while I uh, tell OBS that I uh, really did want it to show a 1920 by 1080 source at 1920 by 1080. Oh, and then it, oh, and apparently I made a mistake on 
There we go. No. Display two. Oh, whoops. Hold on. Yay! This is, uh, I, I have uh, done something that I didn't intend to do. So now my, uh, there we go. All right, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. Yay. Technical difficulties. This stream is brought to you, brought to you by technical difficulties and coffee. Because without the coffee, I won't be able to drink coffee, and that'll probably cause me to make silly mistakes. Thus, the, the uh, technical difficulties. This LC needs, John, yeah. This LC needs more cowbell. Uh, you know, it, no, I don't actually have a cowbell. Um, hold, please. Remind me to get a cowbell. We need more cowbell. Okay. Added to reminders. There we go. Well, you won't be able to read that probably. Oh, maybe you will. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Life Lock by Norton apparently detected something negative on social media, and it was probably me just cracking a joke about the pile of image writers in Steve's basement. Um, apparently, uh, Norton Lifelock has no sense of humor about people that enjoy image writers. So, Mac84 Steve, you ought to write Norton Lifelock and tell them that it's a tragedy that their service doesn't recognize the humor of a good printer joke. All right. <laughs> Ah, Francois, good, uh, good point. Uh, possibly halt is kept low by the reset circuitry and released after reset. Okay, well, um, I'm going to go find that page on the schematic. Uh, yep, uh, Ryan, I've, I got a fever, and the only cure is more cowbell. Uh, yeah. Francois commenting on uh, OBS's ability to anytime you switch something to decide to blow the image up to maximum size and then you got to go fool with it on stream uh retro techie cannot you cannot have it um oh actually no retro techie i i actually do have something you can have uh i know it's it's uh probably the thing you've been always wanting and i've misplaced it so i'll let you know when i find it um I, actually it it did come from garth it's so they're a very special thing you can have. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, Ryan, retro techie is, is allowed. We, we can, we can let him in. Um, uh, retro techie, if you want your own cowbell, I'd probably be easiest if you go to your local tractor supply company or whatever the Canadian equivalent is, which is probably Canada Tire and uh, get a cowbell from there. Although, it would not surprise me if Tractor Supply Company is actually in Canada. In fact, I could see them doing quite well up in Canada. But yeah, uh, if there's no Tractor Supply Company, it seems like your equivalent is Canada Tire. They have everything. So, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. So, uh, and Retro Techie needs 61 more subs, so go, go, <laughs> uh, so go, go do what Sean's going to do and unsubscribe and then resubscribe to Retro Techie, but no, I don't think that'll help Retro Techie. Uh, Retro Techie posts some cool videos, so go, go check out Retro Techie's channel. I will allow him to, uh, Retro Techie, you can, you can shamelessly plug yourself in the chat. Go for it.
<laughs> and, and now I think Retro Techie's thinking about if he really does want to plug himself because he's afraid he's afraid that that might involve me sending him what this little pile of old capacitors that's sitting right beside me. But they did come from Garth Retro Techie. They came all the way from from California, so they're exotic West Coast capacitors. <laughs> You know, Retro Techie, we, I think we might just have to do that someday. So ha have your people contact my people and let's see what we can come up with. Oh, thank you, Retro Techie. Yeah, well, uh, let's see what we can come up with. I, th I think we might be able to do something. So, oh yeah, that's right. So what was I going to do? I get sidetracked. Uh, I was going to look to see what asserts reset. So interestingly enough, looking at this schematic, it seems as if reset Okay, I don't know what all this silliness is. It looks like if any of these signals are asserted, then a bunch of interesting stuff happens. Okay, I don't know. All right, uh, we'll see you later, Sean. <laughs> oh, hey, Dana. <laughs> oh, okay. Some, sometimes my brain says things the, the uh, way I didn't mean. All right, so let's let's see what can assert reset. And I think what this is trying to tell me is that reset asserts this, but I think it also then ultimately would assert IPL2 maybe. I don't know what IPL2 is. But let me let me see where the reset signal is on the schematics. Cuz let's let's start with there. Something is asserting reset. It could be a result of something not initializing, or maybe there's a broken trace, so some component doesn't see we have voltage. So, okay, that's the processor. So I think these are the ROMs, I believe. ROMs. Rubs are not going to assert reset, so I don't really need to look at that page in detail. All right, these are the RAMs. I don't, RAMs don't assert reset. Okay, those are the onboard RAMs. Although interestingly enough, there's only, I think the, yeah, the odd ones are only, the only ones populated but it looks like this schematic has the even ones. Okay, there's the SIM slots. None of that's going to assert reset. Now, these are bus transceivers, I believe. Okay, no reset signals there. Here is the egret chip. This is actually one of my suspicions because, ah, looky here. Egret chip on pin 15, system reset out. Okay, so we're gonna come back to egret. Egret can assert reset. Can anything else assert reset? I, I suspect that is the only thing that is going to assert reset. Okay. So egret can assert reset. It does look like though the swim chip receives reset. There we go, this is the, what I was looking for on the schematic, either a bar over it or a slash before it to indicate active low. So the swim chip does receive the reset signal. And given the direction of the arrow, I'm fairly sure that it receives it. I think if it was a bi-directional signal on a chip, it might be indicated with arrows on both sides. Anyways, I don't think the swim chip asserts reset, just thinking how things work. 
All right, and then this is the VLSI chip, I believe, just given the number of pins. It looks like it does have a reset signal and a bus error signal that goes into it. I believe those are inputs to the chip and not bi-directional. Okay, I'm going to work on the theory that those are just inputs. That could be wrong. So, and then this is the video, this is the, gonna be the RAM DAC for the video. And it don't, I don't think RAM DACs usually assert reset. In fact, it probably doesn't, it may not even use the reset signal because I don't see it. Okay, and then, I think these are the last of the logic. So here's the SCSI chip. So SCSI chip, I think, has an input or reset. And I don't think the SCSI chip's going to assert reset. So I think, I think the EGRET chip is asserting reset. I think that's the only thing there. Um, yeah, I probably could be able to control F reset, but. Um, okay, so there's in, out. Ah, here's another interesting signal on the egret. So I think we're, I think the egret's the next chip to look at. Yeah, I, I'm, um, halt is not being asserted, reset is. Um, although I'm gonna double check that, so. Yeah, reset is being asserted. So um, um, halt was at five volts. So halt is not being asserted. Reset is. So I think the egret chip is the only place that asserts reset, but here's this interesting part of the schematic where I don't know what this is. And if anyone knows anything more about the egret chip, it looks like there's a, A um, um, something here. You know, here, here's another chip here. I don't know what this chip is. What is this? This is a under voltage sensing circuit. Oh, okay. Let's find. Uh, okay, I think I think I got a couple things to look at. Uh, let me just double check. There's no other reset. Um, see. Okay, that's reset out. That is the. I believe that's the swim. That is the VLSI chip. Yep. Uh, that is the SCSI chip. That is, no, that's the SCSI chip. Oh, that is also the SCSI chip, I think. Okay, it looks like the SCSI chip has a couple. Oh, it looks like the SCSI bus has a system reset signal. Interesting. And that is the RAM. Oh, that is the RAM deck. So the RAM deck does have a reset signal. Okay. Probably to blank the screen when the system resets. And, okay, that's gonna be the PDS connector. And, okay, that's the processor, back to the processor. So, I think the area I need to focus on right now, hey, Rudy. Uh, the bubble mean assert low. It could. It very well could, Chris. Yeah, it probably does. Maybe that's why there's no slash. Yeah, I, I, um. Okay, so this. What's getting me though is this signal here 
looks like it's some sort of an output going into the low voltage sensing circuit. Somehow, I don't really know what that is. Oh, S reset is not system reset, just SCSI bus reset. Okay. Okay, well, let's, um, let's take a look at the, uh, I just about called that the regret chip. Let's take a look at the egret chip. I believe Well, it could be the regret chip. I, I mean, I could very well find that the egret chip is bad. I mean, it is one of the chips that usually gets to marinate in capacitor juices. So, egret chip pin two. is marked reset question mark on the schematic. And that is low. System reset in is pin 12. Three, four, And actually, I believe that signal is also low. Yeah, low and low. Okay. So it looks like the egret chip, all the reset related pins are low. Now, UD9 is a low voltage. I'm going to, have to pull up the data sheet. So it is a low voltage or an under voltage sensing circuit. And at least on that sheet of the schematic, only pins one, two, and four are shown, but it is an eight pin chip. Oh, and there's only uh, three pins. Okay. Used. Okay. So. That chip, the low voltage or the under voltage sensing circuit, is designed for a reset controller. And I think, looking at the data sheet, that it is, I think the input, okay, the input pin is connected to the power supply, and there's an internal comparator of some sort. And the output looks like the output maybe pulls the signal low. Probably, yeah, I think the output pulls the signal low. I think if I'm reading the, the diagram in the data sheet correctly. So, I guess the question is, what what is this chip, UD9, which is, oh, it is the cutest little chip beside the egret chip. So here's UD9, conveniently located right by the egret chip. So pin one, I believe, is this pin, is the reset signal output. And looking at the oscilloscope, yes, that is low. Pin two is input, and I believe that should be five volts. No, pin two is not five volts. And actually, I did not have my oscilloscope probe on the pin. I had it on the pad. So, ah, all right, here we go. I, th I think I'm, uh, I'm, on, I'm hot on the trail. 
All right, what have I missed up? Oh, uh, Retro Techie, which system, uh, the system I'm streaming from or the system I'm working on? Is the system I'm working on is, a, it's a Macintosh LC. And it's really, uh, and its current system specs are, um, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it, uh, it, it looks very, very uh, nice, but doesn't actually do any computing. It's, it's a sad LC. All right, so I am going to pull this logic board out of the case because I need to do some circuit tracing. So Garth, if you're kind of lurking while you eat supper or cook supper or, or whatever you're doing, uh, yeah, I got a, a potential clue here. The undervoltage sense chip at UD9 doesn't appear to be getting five volts. So I believe it's keeping the system in reset because it looks like to that chip, the system is undervolted. So, all right, we're gonna get to go on an adventure, trying to figure out where the traces go. So anyways, um, and then RetroTech, if you're asking what computer I stream from, it's a, uh, it's an HP Z420 workstation. I have uh, souped it up a little bit, but it's one of those workstations you can buy. Actually, the, the Z420, you can get really, really cheap, I think, now. I'd recommend getting a Z440. They're, they're a little bit more, but not much, and they're like the next generation. Yeah, the undervoltage chip is undervoltage. RetroTech Chris has a very, Quickly summarized it. And uh, yeah, Rudy, I do hope everyone's feeling better than this board. While a lot of this crud you see is actually contact cleaner, um, well, it's also flux residue because I did replace all the caps. So, all right. I guess I need to look at the schematic here too. Let me pull that up. So UD9 input looks like it comes from Q2. Which is down here. Oh, no. Um, Diode one, D1, D1, no, that's Q1, D1. It's gonna be a three pin diode, so it's gonna look like a transistor. Here we go, D1. So D1 is right there. So it looks like five volts. Actually, pin three of it is actually connected to 12 volts, okay? So, oh, let me go to resistance mode. I think this is 12 volts. I don't know which is pin three. I suspect that is actually pin, no, that's probably pin, that's probably pin three right there. No. Is that pin three? All right, so there's pin three of the diode. Because that's, uh, oh, sorry. My, uh, the, these probes are kind of iffy. So, yeah, okay. I just, I'm just double checking I've got 12 volts. Okay, so yep, that's 12 volts. Okay, so pin three is 12 volts. So it looks like that diode is correctly connected there. Pin two. Pin two. 
Actually, let me check pin one. Pin one should be connected to five volts. That's not five volts. I think that's five volts right there. No, that's five volts. No. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at the power supply. Wait a minute. I thought that was 12 volts. No, okay, that's 12 volts. No, that's 12 volts. I know you can't, yeah. You know, it would help if I actually pulled the power supply over, or a power supply over here. So, orange, yellow, blue. Blue is, yeah, okay. Orange, yellow, blue. Blue, okay, that's yellow. I think yellow is 12 volts. No. Yellow is 5 volts. No. Sorry, uh, the, uh, there, there's a key pin on the power connector. I, I should probably just, like, go grab a, okay, a power supply or something. So, it is, a, two, there's two grounds, and then there's a key pin where the pin's actually missing on the connector. And then it's orange, yellow, missing, blue. I know blue is negative 5 volts. And of course, Apple used orange and yellow because why would they? Uh... Okay, so that is. Okay, so that I think is orange. Or uh, yeah, that's one, and then that should be the other. That pin there, actually, I think, yeah. No. I think I might have found the problem here. Yep, there we go. So, whichever the yellow connector is on the power supply, I don't think it's making it a connection to that diode. And I believe it should be. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hold on, hold. Just noticed something. There is a 470 ohm resistor. On uh, after the 12 volt signal, so one of these is going to read 470 ohms. I was looking for nothing. OK, so that one, I believe, is 5 volts. So that one's going to be 12 volts and it should be reading about 400 and there we go. OK. So that's fine. So that is pin three. That is pin one. So this is pin two of the diode. Pin two should be connected to if I'm reading this right. Should be connected to one side of R44, which is a 100k ohm resistor. Now, is R44 on the top side of the board? Now, that's a very good question. I'm hoping it is because otherwise, I got to find the Oh, but I think I see the via I can use if it's not. Okay. 
R44. There's R54. Actually, I better just check the underside of the board. Okay, so I may have an awkward measurement here. Okay, R44 is more than likely going to be on the underside of the board because that's where most of the surface mount resistors are. There's R42. Four, ah, R44. Right there it is. So R44 is... Oh, actually... Let me see. Um, trying to see if I can... Uh, Oh, actually, R44. Actually, let me just do it this way. So, this pin here. Oh. Okay. Problem is, I'm uh, having trouble finding the. Oh, no, wait a minute. I think I just found it. These two vias here are those. So D1. Here we go. So it's going to be. I think actually it might be this VA here. No, maybe that's not it. Maybe it's this via here. Okay, one of these vias here is going to be connected, I think, to one, one side of this resistor. And right there it is. And that's a hundred, yep, hundred K ohm resistor. So now is this via here connected to this pin here? Hundred K ohm. Okay, let me check the side of the resistor. There we go. Okay. So we have a connection there. All right, sorry. Oh, hey, Steve. Welcome. I am, uh, yeah, S1 is a reset switch that's I've never seen populated, except in rare Steve Jobs prototypes on eBay which actually probably are prototypes. So, all right, so this diode is connected to the resistor. That, that resistor should then be connected to pin two of the egret chip. And it is. Yep. Okay. So the egret chip is getting that signal. Now that diode is also connected to R50. Which 
which I just located on the underside of the board. And our 50 should be, one of the two sides of it should be connected to pin 12 of the egret. And I believe that's the, yep, because that's 100k ohm. And that one should be. Did I just find the problem, maybe? Okay, it's 100 a.m. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. 11, Twelve. Oh, I had the wrong pin on the egret. That would do it. Would the real pin twelve please stand up? There we go. Hundred K. And yep. Okay. So we have that connection from R fifty. Now this should also be connected to pin one of. UD9, that same, that same side of the resistor, and my lead fell off, so I may, um, pin one? Yes, pin one. And it is. But that diode should also be connected to, and I can do this directly. This also should be directly connected, from what I can tell, to pin two. And I think make sure I got the right uh oh and Wow, did I have the wrong, uh... Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, maybe I did have the wrong, uh... Okay, so that is connected. So, ah, okay, yeah, Steve says the prototype LC475 has the reset switch. And, not to hear some Nabu talk. Da, 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 da. Oh, Nabu game controllers, I presume. Okay, so the diode is connected. Ah, but <laughs> is the diode. Is the diode good? So here's pin two. Pin two 
and pin Oh, wait. Is that that must be pin 3. Okay. That's pin 3. Pin 2 to pin 3. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's right. And then I'll, there should also be, I think this should have a voltage drop. Yep. Okay. And then I believe if I'm reading this right, that should be, yep, that's no good. And also, that should be no good. And that should. Wait a minute. I don't think that diode is. I think that's the. Okay, I think this is the same type of diode here. So that should be, I think, over, um, no, no current. No current. Okay. So that's a 0.6 volt drop. That's 1.65 volts. I think that diode's bad. 0.58. Overload. I think I got our, um, I think I got the uh, problem. Diode one's bad. It's conducting, I think it's, uh, I think it's conducting incorrectly. So, I don't know what kind of diode it is. But luckily, since I don't have an LC case on my bench to get in the way anymore, Let's uh, let's see if we can read the marking. Um. Well, that's weird. Okay. There we go. That's OBS for you. The uh, obstructionating broadcast software. It will use your camera, but only when it decides to use your camera. All right. Oh, and by the way, this is my, actually, this is my stereo microscope. I cannot recommend it because the uh, manufacturer doesn't make a camera that uh, works well with it. But, well, I'm using what I have. That's why if you ever see the overhead shot of me with the stereo microscope, on the bench, you'll notice that it is a Raspberry Pi camera that I'm using. And believe it or not, this is not an Amscope. This is an off-brand. Oh, hey, Thomas. Welcome. So I bought an off-brand, but in order to get the Raspberry Pi camera to work with it, I actually am using an Amscope adapter. <laughs> or as Joe would call it, an Amscope adapter doodle. So. 
am an Amscope part is making my third party Amscope clone work with a camera. All right, so. Oh, wait a minute. Are those not the same diode? Oh, those those have different markings. I still think the diode's bad. So it is marked A3XG. Hmm. Yeah, this is the diode that's connected to the egret chip to do uh, that uh, feeds into the reset signal. So it's marked A A three X G. That's diode diode one there. In fact, actually, I think that was a bit easier to read while it was wet, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so that is. I guess I could probably go look at the bill of materials for the LC reloaded board and see what it says to use for that diode. That would probably tell me what I need to order. But I believe, I believe that is the culprit right there. Now, is that the only culprit? I don't know. But it does seem as if that diode is not conducting properly, but I guess let me look up what that diode is and hold on, I gotta, gotta sign into GitHub so that I can, well, actually, hold on. I don't need to sign into GitHub. If by chance my browser history has, that Let's see here. Oh, here we go. All right. There we go. Mac LC reloaded. I don't know what an ODS file is. Oh, it's uh, some sort of a spreadsheet. Yippee. I, uh, Outlook is opening. All right, here we go. Macintosh LC, Bill of Materials. This is awesome. So, A3XH. Well, actually, I think it's, uh, okay. So, the Bill of Materials says it's marked A3XH. Uh, the one I've got is A3XG. So SOT23, it says to replace with a BAW56. Okay, BAW56. Well, what is a BAW56? I ask. Mm. BAW56. Actually, Joe, it's like a double diode. A, a common, I think, uh, looking at the schematic, it is a common, common cathode, maybe? No, common anode. It's a common anode double diode. Unlike D4, that is, I think, a common cathode double diode. Which is why, oh, which is why D4 and D1 don't look alike, but. Yeah, it's a dual, uh, dual small signal switching diode. Here we go. And now I know what the pinout actually should be. So let me double check. Let me double check the, the readings. Now that I actually pulled up the data sheet. And so according to the data sheet, I'm going to move over to my other monitor. So pin three is, oh, also help if I 
trying to keep an eye on everything here. All right, so pin three is here. Oh, wait, I need to change. Need to change modes here real quick. Or, hold on. Copy. Paste. There we go. So here's here's pin three. That is the anode, I believe. This should be pin one. Okay. That is, I mean, that looks okay. That's the other cathode. I think that looks okay. So this is my positive and this is my negative. Okay, so there should be no, no connection between those two. Okay, that is correct. There also should be no connection between these two. But there's not enough room under here for me to wait a minute. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That is not correct. That is wrong. I should not be able to do that reading the schematic. Anyways, that's pin one, that's pin two. And now I'm going to share the screen because I do make mistakes sometimes. Now, please, someone that can confirm that there should be no voltage drop as in nothing can, can go between pin one and pin two. I should be able to go from pin three to pin one and pin three to pin two, but not pin one to pin two, not pin two to pin three, and not pin one to pin three. Yeah, what I thought, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That diode is bad. Yeah. Yep. That's what I thought. Uh, there might be some other diode in the circuit. Well, there there is another diode in the circuit, yes. Um, because down here in the schematic, so here's here's D1, but D1 is Um, yeah, D1 is going directly to the pins in question. I know D4 down here, though, does go through this transistor. And D4, I, I mean, I guess I could check D4, uh, but I think D4 is working correctly. So D4 should do the opposite of, yeah, D4 should be the opposite. So therefore, if I look at D4, which is actually right here, so D4, I should be able to go here and here. Wait a minute. Okay, well, let me, let me double check my assumption. I was assuming uh, BAV70. Okay, I was making one assumption that the pin out, that the, the, the pin enumeration was the same. Of course, you know, both these, you know, both of these diodes could be bad. I mean, 
the way they are in the schematic, maybe maybe they are both bad. Oh, yep, there we go. Uh, yeah, I I was correctly assuming the the pin direction. So that is that is pin one. That should be an anode. That's the common cathode. Voltage drop. No voltage drop. Ooh, all right. So I got two bad diodes on this board. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, I don't have any one in 4001s that are of a small enough nature to try to, to kludge them in. I don't, uh, as in, I don't have any surface mount ones. And I, I'm not attempting to kludge in some, um, through hole ones. That's just asking Justin to make a big mistake somewhere and short something out. Uh, now that does beg the question, is uh, Q2, which is a transistor, uh, I don't really have a good way of testing Q2, but let me go back to the schematic. Q2, oh, okay, Q2 is actually, Oh, Q2 is actually the transistor that switches between, I th it looks like it battery voltage or, it looks like it's what's connecting the battery to, wait, the battery, battery cell, Where in the world do they have the battery going to the, Low voltage detect circuit. That is weird. I don't know. Okay, I don't know what Q2 is doing. Thomas says D4 is working. All right, well, if I'm, okay. So here is, Okay, here's the data sheet for D, D4. So, common cathode is pin three, and anodes are pins one and two. So I should see a voltage drop from pin one to pin three, and I should see a voltage drop from pin two to pin three. I am not seeing a voltage drop between pins two and three. I'm, it's, there's no, Uh, I, I didn't see a connection, unless there's something on the schematic I missed. Because there's, there's uh, D4 right here. Oh, pin two's not connected to anything. Okay, well, I still expected to see a voltage drop, but yep, Thomas, it looks like you're right. I guess if D4 is defective, it's a moot point because, yeah, there's nothing connected to pin two. All right, good catch. Yeah, yeah, uh, but here's the thing on the schematic, though. <laughs> Nothing's connected to pin two. So, <laughs> so, yes, Q4 is not working correct. Oh, but that is true, though. Okay, so nothing is connected to pin two, but I do need to check the other direction. So, so okay, there should be a voltage drop here, and there is. This, is, this one's not working here. Okay, so there should not be a voltage drop here, and that's correct. And, okay, well, there's no voltage drop there. But most importantly, if I was reading the schematic correctly, okay. Uh, 
All right, well, when I order this diode for D1, I'll go ahead and order some D4s as well, just because I, when I start taking things off, I might discover that maybe D4 is bad enough to matter. I may also order some of those transistors because uh, I, I doubt they cost like too much. Okay, possibly the drop you see on pin one to three is actually through diode one plus Q2. Uh, yeah. I have 0.7 in both directions. Um, well, I, I guess I, I can check. Uh, I presume you're talking about diode one, Francois. No, uh, on D1 in the opposite direction, I have 1.6 volts. And nothing. So on D1, it is pin 1 that I have 1.6 volts in the reverse direction. Which is not the which is not the side of D1 that's connected to the transistor. Um, I mean, I could desolder them and test them off circuit, but that's just asking for me to lose them. <laughs> uh, but I can try. I mean, I guess what's the worst that could happen? I lose them and then I got to order them anyways. <laughs> Uh, really, I think D1 is bad. Maybe, uh, and I think D4 is technically bad too. It's just, it's bad in a way that's, um, what's on Q2? I don't know. What, um, what's on Q2 3 to 1? Well, I'd have to pull up. Well, okay, assuming that pin three is the same on Q2. And three to one, so three. So on Q2, I've got a 0.7 voltage drop from pin three to pin one. There is no Voltage drop on Q2 from pin three to pin two. I do also have a 0.7 volt drop from pin one to pin two. Uh, no voltage drop from pin two to pin one. <laughs> Francois asks the uh, question that I was wondering myself. Would Apple be so cheap, and I'm going to insert, especially on the Macintosh LC series, to as to use half-broken diodes as single diodes? Um, certainly does beg the question there, Francois. I Yeah, okay, so I, I take it Q2 is actually fine, or at least sounds fine from that quick measurement. All right, let me see if, it, well, I mean, I, I'm going to pull these two diodes off just to double check. Well, I'm going to pull D1 off. Because D1 is the one that seems bad. D4, I, I kind of... Although the interesting thing is the way Apple set it up, they'd only be able to use half defective diodes if they were defective on the correct side. 
Although that does uh, say that maybe on another product, maybe they used half defective diodes that were defective on the other side. I mean, I, I could totally see Apple. I could totally see Apple doing that. All right, there we go. All right, uh, let's see. That should be the transistor off the board. Although, well, the solder is a little blobby. All right. Okay, that's embarrassing. I got it off the board only to somehow get it to stick to the other solder pad. Whoopsie. There we go. But yes, I could totally see Apple buying half broken trans uh, diodes, half broken dual diodes. to save a couple cents. All right, well, it's it's off. So let me uh, kind of get the, the flux off of the pins. Make the uh, reading a bit more reliable. Okay, here we go. So this is diode one that, uh, I didn't do a very good, there we go. There's diode one, that, that little itty bitty thing that I don't think I can zoom in much better with that camera. So let me, uh, how about let me uh, do this. So that the home audience can follow along, maybe. There we go. So, this diode, just to make sure I got the pin out correct, since I've looked at two diodes. Pin three is the common anode. This is pin three. So there should be a voltage drop between here. And there is. And there should be a voltage drop between here. I'm having trouble holding the probes. All right, there should not be a voltage drop across these two pins. You know, these are a whole lot easier to read in circuit because they don't try to walk away from you. I don't have anything that can really hold this. Okay, so there's no voltage drop there, but if I reverse the leads, there should also be no voltage drop. Okay, well, there's no voltage drop there. 
which is okay. There's no voltage drop there. No, interesting. Out of circuit, this diode seems to test fun. Yeah, remember to smash that like button. Yeah, all right, good night, Frank. So, yeah, this diode's testing fun out of circuit. So does that mean the transistor? Or maybe there was some something on the board? Well, there's where the pads were, where the pads are. Huh. What does the circuit test where the diodes were? Okay. So. From pin uh, three to pin one, we have a 2.3 volt drop. From pin three to pin two, we have no drop. That's interesting. So pin three to pin one, there must be something in parallel, I guess. Oh, there's that voltage drop in reverse I was seeing. So yeah, pin pins one and three of that diode. Oh, let me guess, it's that transistor. So pins one and three. Well, pin one is connected to five volts. Pin three is connected to 12 volts. Indirectly. In three, uh, I don't know. I'd, I'll have to wait for someone to comment. Maybe take a look at the LC schematics. Because now, now I'm kind of stumped. Oh, what's the resistance between the pins? Okay. Yeah. Um, yep, I can hold on. Resistance. So pin three to pin one, which would be anode to cathode if the diode was here, there is really large resistance. Yeah, I think that's basically what I would expect for that between those two. So if we go reverse direction, well, we have about the same resistance, 2.8, 2.9. Two seven to two nine. The resistance is lower than between the power rails. Okay. So that is going to be Uh, 
Uh, it's the same. Yeah, that's yeah, it's the same resistance. Uh, well, I, maybe I kind of got have to wonder. Was there something under that diode, maybe? Or is this just a case of, well, the uh, fault is somewhere else? Yeah, I'm literally, oh, Joe says, I'm literally reading the conductance across a logic gate that is off. Yeah, okay. So unfortunately, it would appear as if, uh, Okay, well that's not it. I guess I can put that. Uh, I guess I can put that diode back on the board, if I can find it. Okay, I just about sent the diode flying across the room. Well, hold on. All right, first let me apply some tacky flux so that when I put that diode down, it stays in one spot. Theoretically. Then let me see if I can get the diode on the board. Because apparently I have a cotton fiber stuck to it from where I cleaned flux off of it. There we go. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. And, well, I guess it can't hurt to reflow chips on the board. I mean, it could hurt. I could stick my finger in hot soldering iron while I'm doing it. Here we go. One freshly resoldered capacitator. Or diode. Okay. Well, I guess uh, the, the princess is in another castle. Yeah, the flux will help the diode stick to your tweezers. That might have also been it. Well, I mean, so there's the egret chip. And you know that solder is still kind of looking a bit crusty on that chip. You know, I'm, uh... I'm going to do something wild and crazy here. I am going to reflow the undervoltage detection chip on the side of the chip that's actually connected. And I'm going to reflow the egret chip all the way around. Just to make sure that they are connected fairly well.
There we go. I think it looks better. All right, good night, Francois. Take a look at that. Does that look halfway decent, maybe? Oh. Well, it looks like I could give it another round. Actually, I'm honestly wondering if maybe I should just remove that chip and then clean the pads and reinstall it, but... I'm just doing this because I'm... Uh... Well, I guess maybe I can just go ahead and... Let me just remove this chip and then clean the pads and reinstall it. Okay, there's the transistor I tried to, that I thought might have been at fault, just out of some misguided uh, sense of adventure. Might, I'm going to try to put another dab of solder on my uh, fix. That transistor that I had to bodge does not appear to be in the power circuit, so. All right. Actually, since I decided I'm just going to remove these two chips, let me, I'm going to pull out the, uh, the fancy, the fancy stuff. So I have liberally applied flux. And now I am looking for the little package that contains the low melt chip, uh, the, uh, Well, gener I, well, I don't think it's generic brand Chip Quick. It's just because SRA is not like a small generic company, but this is the uh, Chip Quick alternative. So, all right. So that chip is off. I'll just leave it right there. And then here is the egret chip. Since I am somewhat grasping at straws, I am going to reflow it. I'm going to remove it so I can just check under it. This will also let me clean the pads. All right, so... Now, I should be able to hot air that off fairly easily. Now, this other chip actually is off. Take a look at that in a moment. So there's the under voltage detection chip. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So now let me... Pull out the hot air, 
Let me up the temperature to about, I think 260 should be enough to get this low mount solder to melt so I can get the chip off. And, oh. And if I can get the board, there we go. Now, this egret chip should come off fairly quickly. Actually, I might need to Actually, it does look like I need to add a bit more low melt solder because it's, I don't think I got all the. Oh, there we go. Now, hot air should just probably take care of the rest of that really easily. There we go. Just want to make sure. There we go. Uh-oh. Hopefully that's not an uh-oh. All right. Well, it's a fixable one if it is. All right. So now I need to remove the low melt solder and clean the pads. And I'm going to do this out magnification so I can get in and get out and get it done. All right. Okay. Well, some of those pads don't look the greatest, but Of course, maybe I mean, it does look like the pads are still there, but they look uh, pretty nasty. Okay. I do see one pad that came off the board, but it's a no connect on the under voltage chip. All right, let's go back to microscope view. See what we got. Here. So there's. So for reference here. That's pad 12. That's going to be the, one of the reset signals. All right. More flux on the board. Get some... Uh,
It's those last three pads there that look kind of bad. I'm, I'm going to clean the solder off of them again. I may just clean all that up. Okay, so that pad there is a no connect. Which is probably why the pad came off without much provocation. It's just a pad with, well, it's just a pad there and it connects to nothing. So easiest type to remove. All right, and because I want, I mean, I don't know what the chances are of just removing and reinstalling this egret and the under voltage sensor are of fixing it, but well, I guess it's possible that if the connection on the egret wasn't that great, although I sure thought I checked on the pin, not the pad. Yeah, these uh, on the egret at least, these pads that would have been closest to the audio capacitors don't really look that great at all. Oh, there we go. Now they're looking better now that I'm just kind of. There we go. That looks better. Okay, I think that's just the crusty solder coming off. All right, let me. Uh, Jeremy, I'm positive there's no connections to that missing pad. Go pull up the data sheet for the uh, the under voltage chip and pins five through eight are no connect. It looks to me on the data sheet the only reason it's an eight pad uh, an eight pin chip was probably to make manufacturing easier in a pick and place machine. Although honestly, I don't know why they didn't make it just like a three pin chip, because I think there's only three connections. I'll, I'll post a link to the data sheet if I get a moment. Oh, there went another pad that's, yeah, these are all no connect up here. In fact, pin three is a no connect. Yep, there's the data sheet for that uh, UD9 component. If anyone's wondering how I can so easily say there's it, there are no connects. Well, pins three, five, six, seven, and eight are no connects. They really could have made it a three pin chip and maybe the only, and in fact, maybe the only reason they didn't is so that it wouldn't be confused with a transistor or a diode or some component like that. 
Because I do, I do find it odd that they made it an 8-pin, well, for surface mount. It does look like for a through-hole, they do actually have a 3-pin a version. So I don't know. Maybe it's based off another component that had more pins, and but it's just implementing the the functionality that most customers actually used. I don't know. Anyways, so this is the egret chip. I'm just trying to get the low melt solder off of it. Although I'm not too worried about it running hot and melting solder, but I'd still I want to kind of get the low melt solder and I guess the old solder that's on it kind of off the pins. Because maybe this problem Considering I can't find anything in the path that sets reset or pulls reset low, that seems to be bad. Maybe, maybe it's just a bad connection on the egret. Although there's also the chance that the egret could be bad, which would be regretful, because it is possible that the egret chip is pulling that signal low. Even though it looks like it's actually should be the under voltage sensing chip that should pull it low. But I mean, it's possible if the electrolyte got to the egret chip that maybe, maybe the egret chip is actually the cause, not the, uh, Innocent party. All right. Anyways, I guess now's as good a time as any to remind folks that are watching if you want to make sure that you keep up with all of the Marchintosh, Marchintosh content that I have planned and then make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know when I go online. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy, it's like a pure reset chip. I mean, if I had to guess, it could very well be a um, something implemented to replace the functionality in a larger chip for customers that only needed the reset functionality. I don't know, but yeah, that, that's all it is. It's like it does one, it has one job and its job is to be a reset controller. that also and from what I can see on the data sheet if I'm reading it well if I'm reading the schematic right I think that the reset controller should be the only thing well it looks like the egret chip should be taking the reset input from this chip and maybe it's got an internal timer or something to so I, I can't say that the egret chip doesn't have some internal timer that um, maybe waits for the voltage for the this reset or this under voltage sensor basically reset controller Wait for it to indicate power's good, which is basically what it's doing, 
And then maybe the egret chip does something else before it actually releases the reset signal, maybe? I don't know. All right, so this here, I wanted to just put another dab of solder to make sure that I actually connected the... Basically, I'm trying to use a solder blob to connect it back to the trace. Uh, that, uh, the tip is, that tip is probably too old. Oh, that's nice. Okay. I'm going to have to probably go rewatch, uh, go actually watch part of the live stream because I didn't realize there does not appear to be a clear pin one marking on the egret chip. Or I'm just going to have to, oh, or just dunk it in the alcohol here to get the flux off of it. Um, I mean, uh, Sloppy Malibu, that tip is probably... six to eight months old, but I do try to keep it tinned. Uh, turn the soldering iron off when I'm not using it and tin it frequently to try to keep it from oxidizing. It has to do with my tale of woe I told on Monday about trying to swap to a new solder station that uses a different style tip. Okay. Oh, I just realized I don't need to rewatch my live stream to see what the orientation of the egret chip is. I just need to, uh, uh Oh, wait a minute. Um, oh, wait a minute. Did Apple do something really weird here? Nope. There's a problem with the secret chip. Yeah, Nick Lopez. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, y'all. Don't, uh, don't discount the fact that I wasn't noticing the fact that uh, that yeah, there's a pin missing on the egret chip. And I'm trying to see if I see it anywhere. Well, now that might be, uh, well, that's probably a, well, that's a showstopper. Yeah, there is a pin missing on the egret chip. Now, which pin is it? Um... And uh, better yet, was it missing when I started and I just didn't notice it? Oh yeah, that, uh, that, so that's going to be pin, oh, let's see here, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, pin 15, pin 15. 1015. Uh, Thomas, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. That sounds like something the 8 bit guy would do. Take a Dremel to it. Oh, pin 15, sys reset out.
I think I now know why reset wasn't working. I bet that pin was, uh, I bet that pin was uh, hanging on by a thread. Gra ground. I do not know if I have the hand, the steady hands to do that. I mean, I can give it a try because, well, what have I got to lose? Because this egret chip is useless without that pin. But so for anyone that's been watching my live stream for uh, three hours, I think we finally managed to find the exact cause of reset being probably not working correctly. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like it might be because that pin wasn't making good contact. All right. Well, Jeremy, you have the file right there, so if you, uh, if you throw it as hard as you can, it's probably just going to, uh, assuming you go to the edge of your property, maybe it will land on a UPS truck that's just happening to drive by my house. Uh, okay. All right, this is not usually something I like to do. But the egret chip is like an important chip. This board's not going to work without it, without that pin on the chip. And I would have to sacrifice another board to get one. I mean, I could, I mean, I could take the egret chip off of my other LC board. However, it is a working board, even if it has quirks. So therefore, I'm not going to. Um, what's an O'Reilly Auto Parts? Actually, I know what it is, Jeremy, but uh, there's your answer. <laughs> no, I have a Dremel. All right, guess what? We're now going to see if I happen to have anything in this Dremel kit that will actually do what we need it to do. Yeah, yep. Oh, hey, Sad Mac. Welcome. Yeah, last chip ditch, save the chip, because otherwise I got to steal it from, uh, steal one from another board. I mean, that's not to say that I won't get a parts board at some point, but yeah, I bet that egret chip was. Ah, you know, that makes sense. So. I bet it was the egret chip. Um, yeah. <laughs> ah, sloppy Malibu, I'll first have to build a trebuchet. Go for something that isn't disc shaped. Why do I get the distinct feeling that everything in this box is going to be disc shaped? Probably because they don't ever include the really nice bits in the <laughs> set. All right. Also, the battery's probably going to be dead. Oh, cut the chip in half. Yeah. All the cleaning took the rust out. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Oh, you know, it'd probably help if I uh, changed camera views so you could actually
All right. Well, there's the egret chip. Do they really ship these Dremels with a charged battery? Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> I could drive it over there. Well, well, Sloppy Malibu, uh, the only way I would be able to drive it over there tonight would be if you happen to be within like 20 minutes of me. <laughs> and get it back and put it back on before midnight. Well, actually, yeah, I'd, I'd want to be, uh, I got to work tomorrow, so yeah. I, I somehow suspect you're not that far, or you're probably further. Yeah, the, uh, this set has nothing in it that looks like it would help me with this situation. Because it's sanding discs and... Yeah, it's sanding discs and round tool, yeah. Okay, well that, that is not going to help. I don't think I have any other Dremel bits. Oh, you, do you think it might have taken a twist coming off the board? Might have broken the pin. Yeah, I'm on the East Coast. Oh, okay, Sloppy Malibu. Um, okay, you are closer than I thought you were. I am in Central Virginia. Uh, however, uh, there is no way, um, uh, no way I could get to Maryland in uh, the time allotted for the evening. Although quite on, uh, I'll, I'll put the battery on the charger. Okay, this is what is in the box. I don't think any of those are going to help me grind the pin down. Oh. Sys reset out, being disconnected on the egret shouldn't stop the system. It would just leave the pull-up resistor holding the line high. Yeah, the chip might have taken a twist, Chris. Uh, it still doesn't, uh, I mean, I don't know where the, I do not see the pin. Granted, it's so small, I could have probably just, it would have fallen on the floor. I mean... Uh, Jeremy, uh, that, uh, that meetup is not going to happen tonight. <laughs> because it'd be tomorrow before I could even get to Chris's house. But I am meeting RetroTech Chris soon. And I guess if I... S but I could probably also... Well, okay, I don't know if I'm going to... I don't know if I will get Dremel bits before then, though. I, uh, I kind of wanted to try to get through a few projects without buying any more tools. Although I could maybe be convinced to buy a, a tactical purchase of a Dremel bit. But I, I don't have any other Dremel bits in the house. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I am as far away as possible from you, and I am still in Maryland. Well, I guess I can...
Okay. I mean, I can... Maybe what I'll do is... I mean, I guess I can put the egret chip on the board. Oh, hey, Adam, welcome. I, I guess I will. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Because the witch pin is broken. And because I don't have a Dremel bit to fix it tonight. And because I am not going tonight to the only store that would maybe have the Dremel bit. And also because I could probably still Dremel it while it's on the board. Although, probably not advised. And would be rated... Um, Probably would be rated R by the uh, National, uh, the uh, Board Repairers Association of America for uh, non-recommended board repair practices. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the egret back on and we'll see what happens. So that actually looks, wow, that actually looks fairly well lined up on the board. I mean, I guess it looks like maybe I could uh, do just a maybe little, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. So we'll go with that. Whoops. Oh. And I didn't actually solder anything. What do you know? Yeah, the manual says replace logic board. I think most there's a lot of people that say, well, but that's just an LC. Replace it with like an LC something better. Well, I mean, I, I do have the backup plan that if I totally don't have an LC board, then I'll probably put an LC2 board in my LC. So at least have a, a board that's reliable. But there's also a distinct possibility that even if I do this, this isn't going to work, but And that, that's just because whatever caused that one pin to be fragile and just break off, I mean, some of these other pins could also be equally compromised. So then again, maybe the, uh, the other pins, maybe they just weren't making a good connection. So that's why I was wanting to re reflow them. All right, hopefully I can get the, there we go, get the flux to do its job. Okay, I think those all look good. Dremel before soldering. Now, uh, Jeremy, I don't have anything to Dremel it with, so. I mean, I, I, I don't have any bits 
that would be appropriate for dremeling it. So, so that's why I'm just going to put this chip back on and we'll see what happens. All right, well, I'll fix that solder bridge. I'm having trouble getting the soldering iron under the microscope. Uh, what would work, Jeremy? Um, sloppy Malibu, there, there is no nub. It, it is, um... There, there is no nub of any. I mean, it, it looks like it broke off clean. And I think what you're seeing there on the end of the chip, I think that's actually flux, not. It, it broke off like right at the bit 8193. I don't know that I had bit 8193, but I don't know what bit 8193 is. All right, well, let me, let me see what was in the set. Let me first clean up my solder. Because, yeah, I've, I've already soldered it back on, so. Well, okay, what I'll do, since I already soldered it back on, because sometimes I move quick. And, well, you got to stop me quick. Let's, let, let, let's see what I got in the set. But I'm going to try to power it up first. 8193. <laughs> Uh, <sighs> um, well, It will be dead when powered on. It's, um, 193, that is the, oh, that. Well, I mean, that might work, Jeremy, but... It's an awfully big bit. Also, that's a good point. It'll be dead. 9901 or HS cutter number 194. Turn it 90 degrees. Like that?
I'm, I'm still afraid I'm gonna like go too far, even if I remove the chip. Yeah, 9901 or high speed cutter. I'm, I'm trying to think, do I have any Dremel bits anywhere else in the house? Or horizontally. Yeah, like, like this. The 194 can cut on its top. Um, okay, don't have a 194. Um, Yeah, the 194 is only two to three millimeters thick, so coming straight down works well. Small cutting disc. Yeah, I don't have any of the small cutting discs. These are all large discs. Basically, this set has in it, it's got a 561, which I know is not, it's a, um, Definitely the wrong bit. I think that's like a routing bit. A 420, 426-541-8193, which is the one I had that I think is too big. And let's see, those are buffing wheels. That's like sand. Oh, a 425. Recommend anyone having a Dremel? Well, I bought the Dremel on clearance, which is why I only bought the Dremel and not anything else with it because the Dremel was on clearance. None of the other bits were. Um, and actually, Jeremy, your comment that the, the board would be dead if I just powered up like this, that's exactly what the board seemed to be the way before it was. So I'm wondering if that pin wasn't connected Lay the spindle flat. I honestly do not think I should attempt this with any of these bits. I think I should go get a 194, because that sounds like that's one of the small bits. If I'm going to attempt this, I should probably attempt it with a small bit that I don't feel like I'm going to, like, mangle half the pins on this one side. I mean, I'm also very much tempted to... Yeah, I'm going to get the right bit. I'm not going to try to... I'm not going to try to to Dremel with what I have just in the name of trying to get it to work tonight. Let me, let me go. I'll, tr I'll try to get, I mean, I, I can go to Lowe's or the hardware store tomorrow. I can get, I can go get a different Dremel bit that's closer to the right bit. And then, uh, I, I can fix it then. Let me let me not try to let me not try to fix it tonight in the name of we must know if it works tonight because that's exactly how I slip and break multiple pins and then I got to get a an egret from a dead board. Um I mean, I'm. Uh, 
Well, Jeremy, I hardly go in Walmart these days. Oh. A, ro uh, a rotary tool assortment. Oh, they have them in stock at my local rec uh, Walmart. Does that even have the right bits in it, though? Actually, it does look like it does. Okay, well, I mean... Yeah, as much as we all want to know, it's worth it to, to get the right... Let me get the right bit. I don't want to just rush it. I mean, at least the, the good thing is... Although, like, I can't, okay, in this view, I can't uh, zoom. That is, like, as far as I can zoom out. I mean, it does look like I got the chip on otherwise. And the legs do look better. I think I got it on. Well, I may, uh, well... Okay, I may I may voltage test those. Okay, well I I will get an appropriate Dremel bit. And then I will try to save the egret. But I'm gonna actually get something that's small enough that I can just come in and get that corner. I just wanted to take a look at the, can I jump start it? I don't know if you can jump start an LC. I really don't know if you can jump start an LC. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a soft, power on circuit. I mean, I guess, I guess I am somewhat curious to just to double check if I did. So if I did put this board back in the computer and power it up, does it do the same exact thing? I suspect the answer is yes. I suspect that... I suspect that pin was probably not making good contact to begin with, and... Actually, quite honestly, maybe it, it might have broken... Maybe it broke in shipping, or... I mean, I guess if I grabbed the board just wrong, it might have broken and I wouldn't have been able to see it. I don't know that I have that many LCs, Jeremy. I mean, I only, I only have an LC that's problematic. I have a spare LC board, this one here, that's dead. But that's only one LC and an extra logic board. I have one LC2. I have a spare LC2 board that's the one I got today. But still, I only have one LC2 with a spare board. I have two LC3s. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if I have anything, it's a spare LC3. I was, though, going to look and see if it was a plus by chance, but um, I don't know how to tell, tell them apart quickly. And then uh, I've got an LC-475. That, that concludes my list. I mean, the, the only ones that I have spare boards for are the LC-3 and the... Or, or the LC and the LC-2. But the LC's board, spare board is dead. That's the one right here. And then the LC-2's board is horribly crusty, which I'll put in the ultrasonic cleaner. There's my spare LC2 board. 
Uh, hopefully, it will clean up and I don't have any reason to have to try to remove the egret chip. Because I don't want to risk breaking another egret chip. But hopefully the fact it powered up means it'll just power up. But yeah, I'll probably dunk this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, well, Jeremy, to do that comparison, I would need a 2SI. <sighs> and the 2SI is quirky. Well, I'm going to throw this board in the ultrasonic cleaner. Just because. Get that corrosion off of it. All right. Um, okay, so what's that pin drive? That pin drives the sys reset out. So that's actually connected to the reset pin on all of the chips. So yeah, without that pin connected, the board's going to be held in reset. That actually... That's actually the symptom I'm having. That pin's probably been broken the entire time. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe... Uh, or, comp uh, or at least I'll put it this way. That pin has probably been compromised the entire time. Maybe the twist I accidentally gave the chip broke it all the way, but I bet it's been compromised the entire time. Yeah. Oh, manually put the signal in the reset line. Um, well, that would require me to tie it to five volts. I don't know if I got a good way to tie that to five volts. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to pull that line high and, uh, um, right through a resistor. Well, I don't know where I can tap into five volts easily and reach that uh, leg. And I, I have to look at the schematic. I mean, maybe, maybe C9. Well, no, I d um, C9 is... Oh, well, actually maybe C9 is five volts. Well, no, 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 my, my objection isn't that there isn't five volts. It is, I don't want to risk damage to the board in a foolhardy attempt to see if the board will boot. This requires me to find, oh, good night, Dave. I, so I got to find, I got to find my resistors because it's going to have to be a through hole. And I got to find a point close enough to this chip that's 5 volts. But I, th I think C9 is 5 volts. Um, oh, I, and I don't want to solder to something that doesn't already have solder on it. I don't want to like, risk soldering a ROM uh, onto the board. Um, I, my skills are not good enough to use a 5 volt on the processor. So it was kind of a, well, where do I know I have five volts that I don't have to sort through a schematic to find? And it looks like I got five volts there, but the problem is, uh, what size resistor, 1K? Because the answer to that is, I know I've got them somewhere, but where is somewhere?
Maybe someday Justin will get a whole bunch of organizer bins, but those those are like really expensive. <laughs> Which is why I haven't bought them yet, because they are like really expensive to get the nice anti-static ones that you can put components in and not have to worry about zapping your expensive components. Uh, let's see here. That's 220 ohms. That's probably, I mean, that would probably work in a pinch. There's a 2K ohm. Well, let me see here. Um, well, I guess 2K ohm, 2, 2K is probably close enough. Let's see, that's 150 ohms. Uh, that, those are capacitors. Uh, those are 3.9 K. Oh, there's 1.5 K. That's a little closer. Okay, let's just go with these. All right, 1.5k ohm resistors. That's probably close enough to pull the pull the signal high. Okay. All right. I guess the other reason why I was trying not to do excessive soldering is because I don't really want to break this pad. if I can help from it. As I figured out on my stream on Monday, my uh, my trace re repair skills can s use improvement still. Actually, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get this resistor in here. Oh, which I guess I'm uh, thinking of that. My, uh, the uh, PC motherboard that I had that was DOA, that was supposedly tested working. Ah. Well. Okay. That's bad. I just ripped the trace. Okay. Yes, I just did exactly what I was afraid I would do. Oh, that is going to be... Oh, that is going to be so difficult to repair. I 
I know I gotta learn at some point. But yeah, I got the trace good. Yeah, I was uh I I was actually trying to quit while I was ahead and I got convinced to try a try a bodge and well Well, I guess now, well, I mean, I guess uh, I can I mean, it is quite possible that trace was weakened already from electrolyte so i mean that's not to say that it wasn't going to come up anyways because it just kind of well jeremy it's not too terrible except my repair skills on something like that are terrible and yes i know i've got to to do it to learn to improve but now I've got a broken pin on the chip and no pad and no trace up to that via. So yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm a little bummed. Well, I mean, yeah, depending on how big that via is, though, it does give me a really easy way of putting the resistor there. So let me, let me, well, I mean, at the moment, even if I quit now, it's not like I'm going to fall asleep in the next 30 minutes. I mean, yes, at least there's a via right there, but... I struggled so long on Monday with that bell wire that it's just not even funny. I don't see... I don't see how... Uh, I uh, I guess I have yet to figure out the secret to working with it so that it just like turns out pretty because it like wants to go everywhere when you work with it. It's like it has a mind of its own. Well, that V is not big enough to put my resistor through, but it would be big enough to put a I mean, it'll be big enough to repair with bell wire, but it's not big enough to put a resistor through. I don't know. I I don't have a parts board to practice on, but I got a, I've got a penny a motherboard that's probably. Quite honestly, probably not salvageable. I, I tried to repair it, and it, it um, it's stuck in a boot loop, and I'm actually... Uh, well, actually, you know, I might have a parts board I could practice on, but I can't... I, uh, I, gotta, I gotta use the... Yeah, I mean, I've got a 2CI board that I did buy for parts. I guess I could practice on it, but... Uh, not until I do a couple shorts with it. I mean, subscribe to my channel so you can watch the shorts and then you'll see why I'm not even going to try to, to resurrect it because it's function. Um, well, Jeremy, I appreciate the function over form except when you're trying to well, in some ways, have a good-looking example, although I guess I don't really need to show people the logic board. That via should be high if you powered the board right now, and it was the egret pulling reset down. Yeah. That's actually kind of why I was just going to power the board up, but... Um, because I, I was kind of wondering if maybe the, if the egret was pulling it down, then hopefully it wouldn't be stuck in reset. I mean, I, I mean the board, uh, I mean, it is quite possible that I might have to like bridge S1 
when I first power it up because power will be funky. But I mean, I can do that with just a couple leads. I'm trying to figure out where S1 is in the schematic. Oh, there it is. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm tempted to just try it, to end the stream trying it, see if it powers up. It might not. All right. Uh, enough of the Eeyore talk with me getting bummed because I ripped the trace. I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. I'll, I'll get some bits. I'm not saying I'll get go tomorrow and get the bits. Uh, but I'll, I'll get some Dremel bits. I'll get ones that are better sized for this chip. Uh, and I'll, I'll fix the board. It's just kind of the... Uh, I got bummed for a minute because I ripped a trace. The side of my brain that got bummed because I ripped the trace reacted before I really got a chance to look at the, the fact there was a via very close by. So, I mean, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. And, yeah, I guess, I guess in the video I would like to do on the LCs, um, uh, Jeremy, I'm not even going to say I'm going to get bits this weekend. Uh, I, I can't, I can't do all my Mac and I know Dave wants to have a Marchintosh themed stream, but I don't have enough Mac stuff <laughs> necessarily to do Marchintosh stuff on Dave's stream and still be able to do Marchintosh streams myself too. Um, Although it seems like people are going to be working on Naboo's on Dave's stream. Um, we'll see. I mean, maybe I could save this board for Dave's stream, but I, I really don't know if I'm going to, when I'm going to go get bits. Um, although it does seem like... Uh, ah! Although it looks like Adam is uh, making sure that I can fix it. Thank you, Adam. I, I will. Uh, well, actually, I think now I probably will go get bits. <laughs> not, not tonight because Walmart closes in 18 minutes, I think. And uh, in fact, actually, if, if I got up into the stream right now and went as fast as I could to get in my car, I uh, I don't think I could get to Walmart in 18 minutes. It would be a stretch. I mean, I probably could. But yeah, it, it, it could be a stretch, even though Walmart's like really fairly close. <laughs> it's just all the, the um, I have to make a, a left turn at an intersection where there's a stoplight and that stoplight is just weird. I have been in this area for, I don't know uh, how many years now, uh, 18 years, 19 years. Okay, granted, I, um, it's been a shorter time when I actually dr drive through that intersection a lot because it wasn't until they built the Lowe's, but I have yet to figure out exactly how VDOT has programmed that stoplight because <laughs> quite honestly it's it's like i think southbound gets less time to go through the intersection than northbound uh especially during rush hour traffic or when the university of virginia has a football game it seems like v dot has the stoplights programmed to say is it is it rush hour? Is there a UVA football game? If yes, give southbound traffic half the time as northbound traffic to go through. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, Jeremy, Retro Tech Chris is, uh, knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> VDOT is the worst 
Yeah. <laughs> so Chris is pro I mean, I could get to Walmart in five minutes. Um, I mean, or well, okay, I think it's about, okay, I, I can get to Walmart in seven minutes. Um, on average, but that is how bad VDOT has some of the stoplights programmed these days. <laughs> it's like, I can get there in seven minutes, but sometimes it takes me 20 minutes. It's like, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, and some of that has to do with if I'm taking the back way just because I think 29's congested, but still, it's like, yeah, I, I can get there in seven minutes on a good day, but it can take 20 minutes sometimes because reasons, and, and that, that's not saying there's a traffic accident and it takes 20 minutes. It's like, there's just a little bit of extra traffic, and you hit the light, just the light's just wrong. And it takes 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Retro Tech Chris, yes. We have had mystery stop signs show up and nobody knew why. Yes. <laughs> it, it's just like the, um, I, um, I was scrolling Instagram and one of the videos it suggested was, uh, um, I, it kind of reminds me of that. It was, um, so uh, it's, it's a football game. I guess it's a, a capture of a football game that was being televised. I don't remember which game it was, but I, the referees blew, blew the whistle. And I don't know if that's because they saw someone coming on the field or they were blowing the whistle for something else and someone jumped onto the field that was dressed like another referee. It's like, <laughs> it's like another referee shows up. We don't know where he came from. And then a brawl ensues because of other reasons. But yeah, I was like, where did this extra referee come from? It's like, yeah, VDOT's like, <laughs> so it's like one person in VDOT's just tasked with like, okay, you have 20,000 stop signs to install. If you don't install them all, you'll lose your stop sign budget. They, they go nearly the entire year. They only had to replace 10,000 stop signs due to ones being damaged. And there was only like 5,000 scheduled to be added somewhere. And they're like, well, we got these extra 5,000 stop signs. I got to use them or lose them. <laughs> it's like, there you go, Retro Tech Chris. That's probably why that, those mystery stop signs show up. It's like someone at VDOT, use it or lose it. And they got the stop sign budget. Yeah. I've... Anyways, okay. Oh, uh, thank you, Adam. Yeah, so it'll be more fun to see how I spend $100 than you do. Well... Um, I, I actually will probably go to Walmart and tomorrow and get some, uh, get that rotary bit set that Jeremy sent. That's like, uh, actually a pretty good deal. And, uh, so there, there's a little bit of how I use it. I will get a rotary bit set. Then next time I do something like this, I'll have the bits. And uh, yeah, and actually there was, um, Actually, I was thinking there was like one last thing I wanted for Marchintosh, so I just have to remember what that was. But yes, I will put it to good use, Adam. Thank you very much. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have some bits. Um, and, uh, and also, I uh, yeah, weld two stop signs together and use for what? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Dick, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, actually, Jeremy, um, I've apparently logged in or at least browsed Walmart here, and it's 1488 at our Walmart. It, actually, their website's telling me I could pick it up tomorrow. Uh, and I could actually have them ship it if I really wanted to pay for that. But yeah, I'll just go pick it up for 15 bucks. I mean, it does look like it has all the bits I'd ever need. At least it's a decent starter set. Actually, it looks like a better value than the Dremel brand. Which... Yeah. 
All right, I will. Uh, I'll. I'll go get some bits. In fact, actually, I might. Uh, I might order it tonight and just uh, have it waiting for me at customer service or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could buy six of them now. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Anyways. So. All right. Yep. I know. I guess the the moral of this repair is. Sometimes you make mistakes and your brain decides to uh, go all Eeyore on you like, oh, well. But, you know, sometimes it just helps for someone to point out, you know, that's not as bad as it looks. And I will give a try to re rescue this egret. And if I don't, if I'm not able to rescue that egret, then... I mean, this board might still help me somehow. The thing is, I, I have not yet figured out what is bad on my board. And it's possible I may just... Uh, may, uh, may use this as a... Well, I guess if the time comes, I'll take a look at the two LC boards and figure out which one's in better shape and possibly start transferring parts from the other one to see if I figure out what exactly is causing the problem. Basically, the, the, I guess to close this out, the, uh, oh, hey, Eric, welcome, and Roger. Ah. All right, and, and thank you, Adam. Well, we'll, we'll talk to you later. So anyways, um, the symptoms of my LC are is um, so I've got this mystery upgrade board. Which, uh, hold on, hold on one second. Let me, let me just make sure I'm not like being mysterious for no reason. Because I was kind of thinking, you know, it might be possible that the uh, it might get announced in Marchintosh, but then again, we're only on Marchintosh the second, so. <laughs> Okay, all right, I still gotta leave it a mystery. I, there's no public announcement yet. So anyways, I have this mystery upgrade board. If I put it in my LC, the system chimes, I hear the speaker pop, death chimes. It never gets to a video image. If you've ever powered up an LC, uh, you'll know that you, when, after you hear the chime, the, you, you, there's a pop that you'll hear out of the speaker. I don't know what the, the board's doing, but there, there's always like a pop you hear from the speaker after it chimes. It's probably initializing something in the sound circuit. Anyways, so if I put this mystery upgrade card in, then yeah, chime, speaker pop, death chime. And, uh, but I do know the upgrade card works because if I put it in, this mystery upgrade card into an, the LC2 that I have, uh, it works just fine. So, okay, there's that. Also, if I accidentally bump the monitor cable out of my LC, it'll restart. Which I don't, that doesn't seem right, but I don't have another LC to compare what it does. Also, I don't have another L LC that's working to figure out what the mystery upgrade card does it in as well. And um, I, let's see, there was one other thing that it does weird. Oh, yeah. And, um, and then, of course, there's the, just the weird random. I think on my LC board, uh, randomly, it just like decides to hate the blue scuzzy. It's like, it's like. It just starts hating on the blue scuzzy. I can't explain it, but it's like, I mean, and maybe this is a sign that the scuzzy chip, maybe, I mean, you know, it could be the scuzzy chip on my LC. Uh, I mean, they are on the same bus, but I, I wouldn't expect the scuzzy chip to cause trouble with the monitor getting unplugged. But I mean, if, if I can't get this board working, I mean, it is possible I may try lifting these two chips and putting it on my LC board and see if my symptoms improve. 
Um, I don't know. But anyways, those are the symptoms. The mystery upgrade card does not work. If I bump the monitor cable, it restarts. And sometimes it just like starts hating on the blue SCSI. I don't really have a mechanical hard drive to see what it does, but uh, yeah. And then there's the weird thing that um, one of the, the onboard memory chips just like failed on it. Which I guess isn't unusual. I mean, all, all silicon will eventually fail. But it wasn't MT RAM. So, I mean, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess if anyone watching this has any ideas of, of something that could cause... I mean, okay, the RAM failure was probably a random coincidence. Probably has nothing to do with the other troubles I've had. Although, when it decides to start hating on the blue SCSI, it kind of acts exactly like it did when the RAM failed. But I've run, uh, I've run Snooper in a loop, and it, it never finds a RAM problem. So it's kind of weird. I don't know. Anyways, that, that, so that's why I, I asked Garth for, or well, I didn't ask Garth directly. I asked social media, and Garth said, well, I got this spare board. So yeah, it's kind of the, I was looking for another LC to see if I could, if I could find one that was working better than mine and then put that in my LC. And then there's always the chance I could fix mine if I could figure out what's wrong. But uh, it is possible that this one may just may become the part source for my LC if I figure out what's wrong. I mean, there, there are a number of possibilities. It, I mean, there are a number of bus transceivers on the board. And uh, maybe I've got a bus transceiver going bad. Uh, I don't think it's ROMs, although Quite honestly, that'd be a quick thing I could check on mine, just swap the ROMs uh, if these are a different version, but whatnot. Anyways, that's kind of why I have this board. Yeah, I know, every, every day could be a Mac day. So, oh, the online price is different from the in-store price. Order them online, then pick them up. I, thank you, Jeremy. I will definitely do that, especially because... Um, Walmart isn't my favorite place to shop, so anything I can do to, to get in, get what I need, and get out is always appreciated. So, yeah, I think I will do that. I'll, I'll order them online and, and get them. It, um, and, and no, it, it's, it, if anyone's wondering, it has nothing to do with the uh, anything in, like, recent history and is in the past several years. I've just never really liked shopping at Walmart. So, yeah, I just never really liked it. I mean, I will, I will if Walmart's the place that has it. It's not because I'm opposed to saving money because there are, I mean, there are, Walmart does have nice things. Um, in fact, I mean, there are a couple things I've found that I like the Walmart version better. I just, I just don't like shopping at Walmart. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, Target's slightly nicer, but, well, maybe, it, I don't know, maybe it's just department stores in general. Um, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the fact that some of the smaller department store chains were more fun to shop at, and now it's pretty much like Walmart and Target. I don't know. Maybe I should go to Canada sometime and shop at Canada Tire. Maybe that's a different department store experience. <laughs> uh, but that would also be a much more expensive department store experience. So anyways, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm not the only one that uh, doesn't really like shopping. Okay. Yeah, Eric, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, I mean, I'll, I'll shop there if I need to. I mean, there are things that Walmart has and there's things that Target has that I like. But it's like, I'll, I'll go there like once every couple months with my list and, and run in, grab things, and run out. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, I, I will spend more time in the... In fact, actually... Actually, my, my grocery shopping trips are usually about as long as my Walmart trips. And if that says anything about how, like, quickly I will go in and get what I need and get out, because the grocery store is smaller than Walmart. <laughs> in fact, I... Uh, that might be it might be that I just invented a new sport, uh, Walmart power walking. It, it's kind of like a combination of supermarket sweep, if you remember that game show, and power walking, and maybe a bit of hide and seek, where you get a list of ten items, and yeah, you you got to be the uh, first person to to. Bring back all those items. And, and no, uh, none of them are trickly hidden. It's just like, how fast can you power walk through Walmart, grab these items, and get to the register? So there we go. It's my, my new sport, uh, Walmart power walking. <laughs> oh, well. Um, okay. Uh, Okay, that, Jeremy, you just reminded me. Though there is one place in town that, that I I like going to even less than Walmart, and that is Whole Whole Foods. Yeah, I was about to make a a joke, but then I realized no, some people might not get the reference to Whole Paycheck. Um, Okay, uh, and that might be one of the reasons I don't I don't like going there. I mean, they've got some nice things too. I, I, I will go there when I have a hankering for like a very few specific items that I know they carry, uh, and usually have in stock. Um, if you want to talk about a store where the parking lot is always packed, the store is always packed. I mean, I don't know how they I don't know how they pack so many people in a store of the size. Uh, and, and also, it also might have something to do with the fact that every time I go there, I think at least one person tries to run me over in the parking lot. Uh, Whole Foods is like, apparently I am missing out on something because there are so many people in there or I just live in the right place for a Whole Foods one. I don't know. But yeah, if you want, I, 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 I would rather go to Walmart than Whole Foods, but that is just because like it's too peopley and too expensive. But I, I do I do like one thing that they I know they or at least they used to carry. I haven't been there in a while just because I, I got tired of almost getting run over every time I went there for the one item. But there's a local a, a local um, food company that makes a product called No Bull Burgers, and I actually know the proprietor. Um, it's, it, she actually uh, started the company after making these veg, vegetarian burger patties with her family recipe. Um, but yeah, uh, Whole Foods carries them. And every once in a while, I will get a hankering for them because they are really good. But I haven't been to Whole Foods in a while because every time I go there, at least one person tries to run me over. And it's not like I'm running out in front of them. I mean, I look both ways. I start walking down the the parking lot and then someone tries to run me over it's like where where are these cars coming from so, so i just yeah and and there's usually like three empty parking spaces when i get there so um at least i will say walmart's parking lots are plenty big and i don't think i've ever been almost run over in the walmart parking lot so walmart has that going for them <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's like every time I go to Whole Foods, I get almost run over at least once, if not twice. And uh, I don't know. Maybe our Whole Foods is an aberration and others aren't quite that busy all the time. And people aren't almost running people over every time they go there. But yeah, ours is like, I... Um, I think there's another grocery store that carries the the no bull burgers now. So, uh, I mean, I kind of have wanted some recently. So I think I'm gonna have to go check the website out. Uh, and maybe there's another grocery store in town that carries them now. 
but it used to be uh, Whole Foods was the only retailer that was selling them because they had to get, they had to start somewhere. And I think they started with the Whole Foods like here in town. And, and then they've grown enough that I, I want to say that Kroger's might carry them now. Um, I just usually don't go to Kroger's because they're, they're far enough away that it's annoying, but at, at least I don't, um, Kroger's is nice and I don't get nearly run over every time I go there. It's just kind of far away. So uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so let me catch up on the chat one final time. Now that I've uh, told funny stories about shopping in town. Uh, a couple uh, suggestions for month names. Uh, let's see, Apple, a Apple, uh, yeah, I don't know how you pronounce that, Roger, Apple or a April 2 or Maple 2. Actually, uh, um, I was trying to do Apple 2 July last year because Kansas Fest is always in July. Uh, that's my humble submission to the, but why do we limit Apple and Mac stuff to just one month each a year? Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, then. Um, 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 <laughs> you all are coming up with month names that I can't pronounce. <laughs> Amigust, and then Septandi, and then eventually December. Oh, yeah, Jeremy, yeah, I'm surprised you forgot about Octari. Um, and <laughs> Roger, Novell Rim, Novell, Novell Brimber. No, Novell Ember, okay. Yeah, um, I I, uh, I I I don't think I'll be participating in Novell Ember. I don't have fond enough memories of that operating system. <laughs> yes, Sloppy Malibu, yes. The only time I liked shopping at Walmart was when I could go at 3 to 4 a.m. Yes, um, I, I do have to say that I, when, our, when we actually had a 24-hour Walmart, there were a couple times where I would go at like 11.30, just because of how not busy they were. Uh, yes, I do miss that. Uh, I, I do prefer to be asleep at 3 a.m., but I could definitely see the appeal of going to Walmart at like when no one, hardly anyone's in there. They're like stocking the store. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Jeremy, is it, is it Target or Target? Uh, it depends on, uh, if I'm in a fancy mood or not. Uh, yeah, Target. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Target, Sloppy Malibu, Target is a 30 or 50 mile round trip. Wow. I, uh, I didn't realize on the East Coast there was a, a place where, you, uh, <laughs> I thought Target was like everywhere on the East Coast these days. Uh, okay, maybe I maybe I sometimes get traits about Walmart and traits about Target mixed up. Yeah, Walmart's just about everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I actually use subscribe and save with Amazon. I mean, it's not all groceries, but I could see how you could buy groceries from Amazon, uh, especially if you're in a, a place where I, I guess uh, actually, you know, since we have a Whole Foods close by, I think I could order groceries from Amazon and get them delivered. Uh, Roger, you could rename a Problem Mac a Mac Karen or Mac Karen 2. Um, okay, Karen. There we go. I have named this LC board. <laughs> oh, Jeremy, yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to repeat that on stream, but yeah. Um, well, I, I guess I can say the uh, the G-rated version. Yeah, Jeremy says the perfect Walmart door greeter quote. Welcome to Walmart. Get your stuff and get out. <laughs> yeah, they probably don't want to deal with you any more than I want to deal with them. But yeah, Biggie John, I avoid Walmart unless it's an emergency. I have far better options for grocery shopping where I live. Yeah, I um, I I actually usually sh grocery shop at Food Lion. Uh, we ha actually. The closest food line to me is actually pretty nice. Uh, they even have a hot wing bar. And some of their hot wings are actually uh, not bad. So I actually occasionally get those. 
I didn't realize Food Lions had a hot wing bar until I moved to the house I'm in now and started shopping at that Food Lion because of how close it is. And it was like, hey, they've got a hot wing bar. And yet the Food Lion that was close to my townhouse doesn't have a hot wing bar. So it's like, yeah, Food Lion's actually not a bad grocery store. Um, and their deli pizzas that you can take and bake are pretty good. Um, they're not the best, but they're decent. H-E-B, I've heard good things about H-E-B. Yeah, too much Franken food is out these days, yeah. Um, exactly why I, I, um, I'm very picky on what I eat. I, I, I read a lot of product labels, and when they start to have too much uh, garbage in it, I won't buy it. And I'm, I'm trying to cut down on added sugars these days, too, because I think they just put too much sugar in everything. So, yeah, uh, miss the uh, chili con queso dip and blueberry muffins for my presume H-E-B. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Jeremy, not together, mind you. Yeah, uh, exactly. I was like, mm, I mean, I mean, sometimes you got to try things together to know if they're going to be good. But I, I don't think we need to try chili con queso dip and blueberry muffins. I think that's a, I mean, Combining things, though, is how we do have turduckins. Uh-oh. Did my internet just drop? Okay, I'm not sure if you caught that turduckin joke. Um, <laughs> I was talking about combining foods, because I saw my uh, bit rate up went to, like, zero for several seconds. Probably, as much variation as I'm seeing on uh, the uh, bandwidth, it's probably a good... I think Comcast is giving me a hint to go to bed. So I will be ending the stream here very momentarily. So yeah, that's <laughs> sloppy ballad. We have three dollar generals within four miles. <laughs> okay, have you seen the "It's a Southern Thing" sketch on Dollar Generals? Um, if you haven't, I think you need to watch it. Uh, it's it seems to be like on point. So <laughs> don't no, don't network this Mac Karen either. I won't. Um, if I do get it working, I will rename it because it will no longer be Karen. Uh, it, it'll, I'll give it another name and then it's networkable. But yeah, at the moment it's, it's, it's being a Karen and demanding the manager or something like that. Uh, it's, uh, holding the reset line until the manager gets here. Um, <clears throat> it's holding the reset line until the manager gets here, <laughs> which I'll get some bits tomorrow at Walmart. I'll, I'll place an order, I get those bits. So I'll have those really soon, yeah. <laughs> Sloppy Malibu, send me the Macintosh Karen. Well, um, if it gets bad enough, then yes, it'll be coming your way for intervention, so. So, yep. All right. Oh, yeah. You did see that Dollar General video. Yeah. <laughs> I love that script. Yep. All right. Well, anyways, I think I caught up with the chat. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me. I am, uh, I think I'm done for the evening. I, I will get Dremel bits. I'll try to repair the egret chip because they're not making any more of those. I'm pretty sure I can repair that trace. Uh, it, it looks like. The initial reaction, of course, is, oh, that looks so bad. How am I going to repair that? And then I realized that, wait a minute, there's a VIA right there. And it's plenty big enough for one of those uh, bell, uh, bell wires. So, yeah. But anyways, uh, thank you all for joining. I would like to wish everyone a happy Marchintosh. I will be having more Macintosh content, or Marchintosh content, so do be sure to Subscribe and ring the bell notification so you know when I upload videos or go live. I really am going to try to do some uh, prepared videos for March and Tosh. I also have a few shorts in mind that I will hopefully be producing and hopefully not overproduce. But I, uh, I, I thought of a few creative ideas to use a parts board I ordered before I actually start taking parts off of it. So take a look for those. And yeah, I can definitely repair that Trace Jack 68K. It just had to get past that initial uh, bummer reaction. So I can fix it. It's totally fixable. 
Uh, I will let Garth know that I think I'm, I, I, I have a suspicion that that pin was probably not well secured and that's probably why it was, why he was having trouble getting it to start and it, it might have been broken. It might have actually been broken before I started tonight. I mean, it, it might have been so weak, it maybe a broken shipping. I don't know, because I never got it to power up. But it looked fine, but then again, looks can be deceiving, especially if you don't move the right side of the pin when you're trying to see if it's soldered. So it's quite possible that pin was loose. And I might actually go back and review footage at some point to see, did I actually maybe move the pin and not realize the top of it was moving? So anyways, yep. I think this board will be repairable. So once I get this board settled, I, uh, I'll probably move to the LC2 board if I have caps. Uh, if not, uh, I've got an LC3. And we'll, I'm going to kind of walk for the live streams this month, I'm going to try to walk through the LCs in order. Uh, one, I guess, one, two, three, and then 475. So with that, yeah, I think, I think, I think I'm going to have an LC Marchintosh with maybe a few surprises. So with that, smash that like button if you like the stream. Smash that like button to encourage me to not give up on this board and to try to repair that trace and the egret chip and take care. Have a great rest of your day. And I hope to see you next time on my channel. If not, maybe Sunday on Dave's stream, because I, while I wasn't on his stream last Sunday or I, I, just, I just wasn't feeling well, I was tired. I, I thought I would feel good enough to join the stream, which is why I think it, initially I told Dave, I'm going to try to join later, but yeah, I, I was just, so tired on Sunday, I didn't feel like joining the stream, and I had to prepare for my eight hour stream on Monday. So, <laughs> but yeah, I um, I definitely feeling better this week and not feeling like I've had fatigue added up. So, I'm thinking I should be able to join Dave's stream on Sunday. Don't know what I'll work on yet, but I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm sure his other guests will be fun, have fun projects. So, I uh, hope to see you all if uh, Dave's stream, if not, then on uh, my stream next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. And with that, have a great rest of your evening, and I will see you later. Computer Ask Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon, and buy your tips and memberships on coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just $1. Don't forget to smash that like button. And if you've liked what you've seen, subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or live stream. And as always, thank you for all your support. I hope to see you next time. And until then, take care.